see you rolling up over black Cadillac high heel boots and a sexy body for the So either way. All right, guys. So uh, I do want to, before we get too far started, I do want to mention the fact that Jeff and I did do some separate videos before this episode, both trying out some poor Osos vodka and this random uh, spicy mead yep. that uh, that I got that uh, was interesting. Those so are good. Those are unique. Those are, those are interesting. So we're not going to do too much talking about that because... We want them to go watch those things. We has other stuff. So realistically, uh, we want to add a little bit more other content, you know, different, differently abled content. Um, so <laughs> we're going to do some video stuff here and there, like whether that's going to be cooking or making drinks or going out to the gun range, something like, like goofing that. Goofing off at of the farm, whatever. Ba basically some kind of vloggery type stuff. You know what? I'm just going to I'm just going to do this. Watching Choki run from a horse, that'll be fun. Look, <laughs> I, the horse can run me over because I don't run. <laughs> so it is fine. So, um, guys, make sure you go check out that content. But either way, welcome back to the Now You Made It Awkward podcast, episode 85. I had to think about it again. Yeah, maybe. Last week was 85. I just, I just edited episode 84 yesterday. Okay. So, and then the uncut version went up for the patrons this morning. So we always got to remember we're a week ahead. So yes. whatever episode we think we're doing, one of we these actually, weeks we're going to put one in the can in case we have to skip. We will definitely do that. We will definitely double book if we have to. That is not a problem. Wouldn't be the third time. Right. So either way. So with this episode, it's actually going to be a get to know Jeff or as he's known in other circles, Hefe. Hefe, road name. But a buddy of mine tagged me with that back in 2010 and it stuck. Stay in the mic. There you go. Quit yelling at me. Well, you can move it with you if you have to. It, <laughs> yeah. it does. It, it, it squivels and but, it turns. So you can like bring it right up in your fucking face if you got to. I don't care. But, you know, stay with it. Yes. So any users. Uh, but um, either way, and I think I'm going to call you Hef. Whatever. That's is, that a, is that okay? That's how it started. Okay. So I'm just going to call you Hef. And uh, because Hefe just sounds Funny weird. Funny enough, a fellow we called Bobo, he started out calling me Hef and then it moved to yeah. Hefe. Nice. And by the way, guys, he does have a legit chair to sit in today. Yeah, for real. Like, oop, wrong camera. That camera. There we go. I'm no so, longer perched on a uh, stool that makes your legs fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, now you're in a stool to make your or a no, chair. Last week, I stood up, made it halfway across the living room, and I was out. I mean, that's fine. Legs fell asleep. Done. Yeah, yeah, so technically speaking, you're in my review chair. And also, I forgot I need to change one more setting over here on the video part. So, guys, if you do want to see the video version of the podcast, you need to make sure you sign up for the Shoki Patreon, at least for right now, because the at least they're getting the full uncut video version in the future, once I really have this whole clicking the right button thing down, we'll probably put out a full-on video version of this. Or if we have some short person who doesn't talk much to push buttons for us, then we'll even do that. I mean, I don't know if we got to get an Amy or we got to get a Jessica or something. We need a skinny dude. I mean, yeah, to stand like <laughs> to stand like right there. Yeah. Once again, I've got my buttons back. Find us a quality homunculus, and so so, <laughs> so somehow I got the cameras backwards. And now I have to fix all my settings because now my buttons are reversed to what they normally are. So this is the Jeff cam, and this is the Shoki cam, and this is the us cam. So as long as I stay somewhere in that center frame of reference, we're going to be okay. Not to mention the fact that things are mirrored when they shouldn't be. So if it cuts to a different angle and you go, wait a minute, he's facing the other direction now. We haven't lost our minds. We're just not good at what we're doing. No, 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 no. And the funny thing is, in the episode last week, I was sitting there editing. And so I got past the first part where we're talking back and forth like this. And I have both things on the screen at the yeah. same time. Um, and then I flipped your footage because I noticed the angle was reversed. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, oh, it's backwards the whole time. I can't just flip. All Let it of run. It. So that means that, like, I have to be mindful. And actually, we switched. Well, it was only angles. mildly awkward. Don't, so, don't start. Ah. Don't start. Oh, I just realized that light is doing nothing for us. It's aimed at you. <laughs> so that actually needs to be like well, angled. You turned it off us. last week and said the same damn thing. Well, no, it is legit like mostly aimed at you. It's not doing anything for me at all. I'm getting overhead light and this little guy right here. But it is what it is. And then my exposure is changing automatically and it shouldn't be. But oh, well. Fun times with cameras and whatnot with Shoki. So um, this will be the Getting to Know Jeff episode, uh, plus other things, because frankly, we didn't get that many questions, but we did get a few. I do have to pull up. I forgot about this uh, because our good friend Sean did comment. Just got to remember which Facebook he commented on. 
here. Uh, no, that's a Dune 2 thingy. There it is. Okay. Found it, it. So Sean actually sent in a bunch, and he was the first person. So we're going to jump down that. And then after we're getting done getting to know you for the most part of these weird-ass questions that everybody sent in. And by the way, guys, if you do want to send in questions and comments, you can do so at the Now You Made It Awkward mail at gmail.com, which is in the description down below. So you don't have to remember or figure out how to spell that properly. Though maybe it's spelled wrong, and that's why we get no emails. Maybe. Weird. All right. So. First and foremost, because Sean is kind of a weirdo. Now, see, Shoki did not let me look at any of these questions. I'm coming at all this cold. Yes, that was the point. Because if you pre, if you, it, it wouldn't take as long or be as off the cuff. I like to surprise people. It's more fun this way for me. By the way, cheers. Yes, sir. Cheers again. Careful, cheers, because we have red solo cups that aren't solo cups today. Now that is the uh, the four ozos. Four ozos. Four ozos with the uh, the. Lime and, lime, lime and yuzu. yuzu tonic. Yes. Tastes a little watered down at this point. Probably needed an extra shot of vodka. I quite like that. It is very drinkable. That's a good warm day sipping. Very. And it's, and it's nice and cool today. So we, we're, we're four for four. Right. All right. So right off the bat, he's going to go for uh, the car guy side here. Okay. Pretty good. So he's got a uh, favorite muscle car. Muscle car. God. Second gen Camaro. I had a 1980 Camaro in high school and absolutely loved it. Um, they were one of the best handling Camaros. They could get sideways and go wherever you point the front tires. They were just a, a real drivable car. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So right behind that, favorite pickup. Pickup. Um, square body Chevy. Who doesn't love a square body Chevy? Uh, weirdos. Well, but they're solid. They're ubiquitous with American car culture. And yeah, I prefer the uh, I prefer the old like seven. Uh, like late sixties yeah. trucks, like I just like that styling. I like the tri the tri tone on the I'm side. I'm too utilitarian in nature to like anything that fancy. I, just give me something basic that works and will always go. Yeah, uh, but like some of the square bodies, like the like eighty square bodies, uh, maybe I just seen too much of them. They just don't look as nice. I had an eighty eight. That was my first truck ever. Um, silver stripe, red top and bottom. Nice. That was good three fifty. Good little truck. Yeah. Uh, it was the first year of the body, uh, the body change, okay. the body style change. So everything was a pain in the butt to work on. Yeah, and my my uncle had I don't I couldn't tell you the year, but I know it was an '80s one just by the looks of it, and it was like a metallic blue. Yeah, it was nice. It was a single cab, short now, bed. Even the Chevy's going up to like '98, but the last year of the step side, that '98 yeah. extended cab step side Chevy was one of the best looking trucks it, ever it, made. It I really mean, just was. a solid truck. It looks really way was. better than any of the big boxy square massive things that they're putting out today. Yeah, I'm not keen on the new ones. I mean, some of them are cool if you do them right, but modern pickups, they're all like the the fun ones are you know the smaller trucks like the uh, the Colorados and the Tacomas and stuff like that. Th those are the those are the real neat trucks coming out. Yeah, I want the uh, I I'm actually looking at small, really small trucks right now, like small Japanese trucks. Okay, like K, like K cars, like the K cars. Okay, yes, I want I want a Daihatsu uh, or a or Hunt, final or Datsun. Well, I don't want I don't want a mini truck. Okay. I want something like Marty's uh, Daihatsu. From, okay. the, from that, and we can get them, but they're coming by way of Mexico yep. or they're being imported from Japan. But either way, um, speaking of imports from Mexico, this year we could finally start getting the Skyline, the Skyline, and the last year they started uh, the last year they made the Volkswagen Beetle in Mexico, the old body style. They stopped making those in 04. Yeah. So now we can import those in. That's good. That's really good. So I, I think it'd be quite great to have an old Volkswagen Beetle made in 2004. Yeah, isn't that weird? That'd be fun. Yeah. Okay, so next thing. Uh, favorite engine? Uh, Lord, Flathead V8 is one of my absolute favorites. That's fucking weird. We have one in the uh, our 51 Mercury. It's actually in the shop right now getting a resto mod, getting a uh, LS dropped in it. So that Flathead Merc is staring at me in the barn, begging me to do a track build or something silly with it. But uh, nothing sounds better than an old flathead V8 with a, a good a good exhaust system behind it. Incorrect. <laughs> Hemi. 426 Hemi. Really? Yes. I'm a Mopar guy. Yeah, you're, you're uh, I, and I'm a Chevy dude. I, and there's uh, nothing wrong old with Ford Chevy. Ford cars and Chevy trucks. That's that's where, and anything Lincoln. I love Lincoln anything and anything station wagon. I'm happy with. Okay. Sorry, I realized I was on the wrong camera. I like any and all wagons. I don't care what they are. I, I I want a wagon. We've talked about this. 
And man, I, Son still has his BMW wagon for sale, and my brain just goes, I want it. Well, that's the reason I've been holding on to the Suburban for so long. Plus, I keep doing more and more to it, and I just don't want to get rid of it now. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Next one. Favorite soda? Uh, root beer. Barks. Or um, the Teddy's root beer that you can get at Tractor Supply. Which is weird to think of a Tractor Supply-based root beer. It's nice. Yeah. I miss B-52's root beer. Yes, that was really good. Um, I will need to make a root beer moonshine for you and serve it to you with some A&W root beer. It gives it that old, earthy, sarsaparilla kind of notes. Yeah. It's real um, good. So... Facebook reminded me that many, many years ago, I actually made some uh, barbecue sauce with B-52's root beer. Oh, hell yeah. And it was really damn good. I only got 4.75 bottles out of it. Still good enough for ribs. Yeah. I mean, it was it was badass. I mean, I put it on uh, pulled pork. I may do that Tuesday. I'm doing ribs. I'm either going to do the garlic ginger plum ribs cut with a little bit of barbecue sauce, or I may make a... Uh, root beer barbecue sauce that sounds really good yeah it's really good as long as you don't get one or you got to get one in enough volume yeah which which is the big thing so the the recipe that i was actually using came from my old boss um and he used saint arnold's root beer as the base and so i went with the well, you can B-52. also bump up the root beer flavor with a little bit of root beer extract that will help That's cheating <laughs> it's getting there yeah uh right behind that favorite pie pie Sweet potato. Okay. Yeah, my, my Aunt Jean made made the best sweet potato pies ever. They were fantastic. Uh, of all of the quote-unquote normal pies, sweet potato would be the one I've had the least amount of. Yeah. But there's some times where I'm like, is this a pumpkin pie or a sweet potato pie? Well, if it's really, really good, it's a sweet potato. Oh, sure. sure. <laughs> I mean, I've had really good pumpkin pie. So it is what it is. <clears throat> of course, I turned to my camera as I coughed. <clears throat> good job, me. In the face. And then, of course, right behind that, of course, he wants to know favorite cake. Um, Cake. I'm not a huge cake fan. I like strawberry cakes with a uh, a nice um, buttercream frosting. Yeah. But uh, other than that, I'm not a huge cake fan. I love red velvet. Because it sort of incorporates cheesecake. Right. And cheesecake. It's counts. real dense. I love cheesecake. So, um, also angel food. Um, love, love me some angel, angel food. food's good a little bit of fruit and some whipped cream no on it no fruit just by itself oh really just fucking I hate fruit on things I hate it it's bad for you you hate fruits pretty much yeah but like the things with seeds not oh like blackberries strawberries yeah berries and things yeah. Jesus raspberries Christ. Jesus Christ Jeff alright uh, Jesus Christ alright alright so god damn it Sean asking fucking top fives um so he wants to know at least five of your favorite movies. Um, any of the Tremor, Tremors franchise. Okay. I really enjoyed all those. Aliens, all of them, except for number one. It was okay. Alien. Yeah, Alien. Um, I'm a big s- series guy. Um, hell, um, Wayne's World. My mother and I spent lots of time watching that as a kid. Okay. Um, Lonesome Dove, one of my absolute favorite movies. Oh, your favorite a- sick movie. Yeah, that's a sick day movie. Spend yeah. six hours doing nothing but watching uh, Lonesome Dove. Okay. And right behind that would be, hmm. Hell, The Replacements, Keanu Reeves. Okay. That's one of my favorite movies. Is that the football one? Yeah. Okay. It's yeah, really good. I've seen that. It's yeah. fun. That one's not bad. Uh, I like, what's, what's the one uh, with Adam Sandler and they're in prison? You know what I'm talking about? Spaceman. No. It's a, it's a but it's a it's a football movie and like Billy Bob Thornton. Oh, the longest yard. Longest yard. That's a good that one. That was a remake. Yeah. That is I know it's a remake. I just couldn't think of regardless, I couldn't think of the title. So I went with the <laughs> one that I've seen. I've never seen the original one. Okay. So I mean that that sounded like at least five. Well, okay, so you have a Star Wars van. I do. Where does Star Wars actually sit in your favorites? It's I enjoy it. It's not something I'm a huge fan of. That design. <laughs> Um, spawned off a goofy conversation I had with my wife. Uh, my wife works as a graphic artist. She's mm-hmm. really good. And uh, looking at the side of that white little cargo van, I said, wouldn't it be funny if you got in silhouette the whole battle scene from Hoth with the snow speeders and the AT-AT walkers? And we started laughing. Yeah, that was funny. And then she started designing it. That is funny. And then when I got done utilizing that van in a professional capacity, we said, screw it. She found a template, threw it on there, and... Um, talked to my buddy Chad 
and he did the vinyl work and got it going. It's just the fun. I, I oh, give that that Chad. That Chad. Well, we do have the other Chad. That's a Chad at C4 Graphics in uh, New Waverly. Yeah. So the other Chad. Yeah. But not, he uh not he, he did a good he did a real real good job with it and okay. uh, makes a lot of people laugh, smile. People take pictures running down the highway. Yeah. And I don't take myself seriously at all, so I just don't care. Yeah. So I had a thought about your your shirt that you got on there. So I, once you, again, my you, wife designed it. Yeah. So you have a Kool Aid shirt. Kool Aid man. Yes, Kool Aid man. And on the back it says, "Oh yeah." It does say that. So I was thinking, like realistically, like if you really want to perfect that shirt, it would take some more printing. Let's say, put it on you. Fuck off. <laughs> I, don't, I actually I don't look good in red like I thought I would. No, what I was thinking is you lower the design down a so little it's bit, just on the belly. But at the top, you add the top of the glass yeah. or the pour bottle so that it looks like the top of the pitcher yeah but i mean that's a lot of extra printing you got to do all over print yeah that's a pain in the dick usually well these are um screen pressed on not screen pressed uh, heat pressed yeah so ooh, so you sorry. can put it wherever you want sorry things are gurgling um a good thing it's like i'm sitting here look at the camera all right and for anybody watching video yes i put my hat on because it just looks better on camera so uh, let's go with okay. So he's got some either ors here. Uh, cookie or candy bar? Cookie. Okay. You got a specific one? Oatmeal raisin. Okay. Old school man. I I, I like them. You know what? You know what? Nobody does, but I like. Put pecans or walnuts in their oatmeal raisin. Well, I mean that's fine too. But no, chocolate oatmeal cookies, chocolate chip oatmeal. Yeah. Nobody does them. Like why? Like it's a it's a perfectly good option, yep. and and because a lot of people go, hey, it's a, it's chocolate. Ch oh, it's raisins, right? You know, it's so like, I, I like them. I mean, I like them too, but don't get if I'm they're just, good, moist, chewy, and ripe. Moist. Mm, nope. Moist. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, stumped. Oops, wrong button. Uh, stumped pinky toe or smashed fingernail. Ooh. Which shop accident do you want? Oh my gosh! Well, they both happen. I guess the fingernail because it happens more often than my toe. <laughs> I'm gonna personally. I know this isn't for me, but I'm going with smashed finger. Yeah, because I've had one of those nearly rip your pinky toe off. Yes, situations. Well, you go that way and it goes the other way. Yeah, yep. it's like corner of a the corner molding on the floor. Lots of cursing. Lots of walking around and hobbling yeah. trying to walk it off yep 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 actually my high school girlfriend literally almost completely detached her pinky toe no. in the dark yeah before we met but she literally was stumbling through the house in the dark trying to get to the bathroom or the kitchen or something yeah. caught it on the corner and it had that metal molding the trailers oh, have no in it like sideways the bitch went sideways uh -uh. so yeah no that's an uh -uh on that one for sure well that hasn't happened in a long time because we have wooden floors all over the farm so i'm always in sandals or flip-flops or crocs or whatever but you can well, crocs yes sandals 100 percent. you can do that yeah i've but, done but it. with the crocs you're protected sure i'm still not convinced to wear crocs all right uh well, I, I never wear them out <laughs> <laughs> all right so this is this is sean's sense of humor Silent but deadly or loud and window breaking? Loud and window breaking all day. I would appreciate if you kept it uh, silent but deadly in here. <laughs> that you, you remember the scene with uh, Squirrely Dan and Wayne with the farting? Yep. Yeah. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. Yeah. Well, love see, that. this chair is not. This chair isn't conducive for loud and window breaking. You would be surprised. <laughs> I have farted in that chair during live streams and thought I got away with it. <laughs> Until I listened back and I went, okay. Reminds me of shopping with my earbuds and listening to a podcast. And uh, while I couldn't hear them, that doesn't mean everyone else couldn't. Well, you don't care at that point, right? Yeah. Inappropriate. So just imagine Wayne standing there with, 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 a, with a dart. Yep. Inappropriate. Anyways. Uh, okay. So this, this is really a discussion question. So... I'm going to skip that one for the moment. We'll come right. back to it. So this one is an actual question that he stole from me because he's a dick. Uh, I said, I asked a random question of him and he turned it back and he said, have you ever woke up hung over and naked in Mexico? Never. Now I've never been to Mexico. Yeah, me neither. So we're, we're both O for O on that one. Hung All right, over so and naked. No. 
unconscious drunk in a kilt in a bush discovered by a peace officer? Yes. Well, then that, that yep, counts. There's something. That fucking counts. There we go. Okay, uh, so let's go to Jay's question here. Maybe I'm sharing too much here. No, it's fine. We, we share a lot. We share all the things here, but don't worry about it. Because if you ever say something you want removed, you go, hey, can we, uh, you know. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll totally leave it in because I forgot. Because you're a dick. No, it's usually because I forget. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, so see how the process works is that I edit the first, like, hour, and then the rest of it is like, screw it. Fuck it. Until I get to the end, and I'm like, okay, there's some things there I should probably have removed. Um, but actually editing the current podcast that's going out, I l- highlighted a section that I want to put out, I think, as a short, because I think it's funny. So um, it was my rant, my short little rant about turning animated movies into live action. Yeah. So I'm probably going to put that out as a rant, which may or may not come out before this episode. Either way. All right, so Jay asked, what do you collect and your hobbies? I'm not... It's a bad sentence structure. I'm not much of a collector. I don't have a yeah. whole bunch of just one thing. What I do have a bunch of is hobbies. You, collect, got, you collect hobbies? I collect hobbies. I've got a bit of an ADD streak. So I, I'm constantly learning new skills, new things, and uh, increasing that knowledge base. And I get really into it for a little bit until I master it, and then I move on to something else. Yeah. So... Um, you know, I, I've I've quit more things than most people even thought about starting. Yeah, I mean, so it's not, like right now, um, it's it's the mead making, it's the, the making wine. I'm hopefully going to be doing beer here soon. It's uh, woodworking, lots of woodworking. I'm uh, slowly and surely, hopefully, going to end up being able to do fine woodworking, making cabinets, armoires, you know, really nice pieces of furniture. Right now, it's all utilitarian, over engineered, never ever going to break. It's like I need a porch built. Good. I got a barn. <laughs> Pretty much. It's like I can, I, can, I can build large things that take a whole lot of straight cut things. Fine, you know, fine woodworking is you know, my the wife asked pain. me to remake a uh it's one of those plastic hanger closet things with the big zipper thing you can move around and store a bunch of clothes in. Well, she overloaded it. That description it. took me a minute to fucking figure out what you were talking she about. She overloaded it and broke everything. It all collapsed. I got gotcha. you. She I said, gotcha. Could you make a new frame and a new hanger to go in it? They pulled the uh, and sure enough. Yeah, keep pulling towards you. There sure you enough, uh, I went to building, over-engineered everything, did it all out of two by four. Yeah. And she loaded it down as much as she could and then stacked about 200 pounds worth of stuff on top of it. Yeah. That thing's never, ever going to break. Good. Right? She learned her lesson. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, I still haven't corrected the Power Rangers you knocked over last week. Oh. Let's go to the U shot so you can see that. You can actually see the Power Rangers he knocked over last week right there. Yeah, knocked over the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers shooting the uh, Power Blaster. You get up, I'll knock you down again. Please don't. (laughs) It takes so long to (laughs) But on top of that, I also work on motorcycles and cars. Um, Because I'm cheap, I do a lot of my own mechanic work. A lot of the rest of the family's mechanic work. So, you know, we're on a farm on 100 acres. And even if we're only running an ag exemption and we run hay in the summer, but even then, there's always something breaking. We've got three tractors and three antique cars and I've got four motorcycles in the garage, none of which run at the moment. And, you know, the rest of our vehicles. So I'm always working, building, you know, fixing something. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a Midland musician. I play a few different instruments poorly, but it, it, it's, it's enjoyable and I, it's relaxing to me. Yeah. So something you and I have in common is the, like, the partial mastery of a lot of things. Well, um, who was it? Shakespeare. He said... Uh, Jack of all trades and master of none is oft times better than master of one. Yeah, because you don't want to have a super specialized thing yep. and then be completely you, useless. You, you'd rather be, I'd much rather be versatile, able to do a whole bunch of everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, but the thing is, you do, you have some collections because you do read a lot. I read, I have a, uh, I collect audiobooks apparently. I've got like 300 something titles and over two years worth of listening time. I would say that would be a collection if you physically had tapes. Right. Like having 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 them downloaded is not a collection, <laughs> I wouldn't say. And then it's just an obsession. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's an obsession, not a collection. But uh I have some knives. I keep knives. I you know, keep buying, I losing, keep breaking. Um And I then got, you find them. I, yep. I got my guns and I you know, I don't buy a whole lot of guns. I just modify what I do have. Yeah. Slick not, them up, nothing make them wrong better. With that. Okay, so that was a good one. Because uh, one thing that people have to realize is that the main point of this podcast is not to just be a collector and whatever. Like that's something that everybody else who's been on the podcast had in in common previously. But the idea is that 
much like with my old Shoki nerdcast, it was you don't have to be a nerd for everything, but everyone's a nerd for something. But in your case, you're a nerd in a nerd for a lot of a things. Lot, and next week it could be I don't know the throat singing for all I know. Who knows? Don't, who knows what may come you, up? You and the fucking follow dope. the dopamine. Yeah, whatever, whatever <laughs> makes me feel good right now. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay, so I hope that answered your question, Jay. Jay used to write in emails all the time asking us questions and or saying things. He well, hopefully he starts back up. We could uh, use a little help. Yeah, well, he, he ended up going to work effectively full-time after his dad died, and basically he's got to pay the bill somehow. So he works a, uh, a lumber mill, basically, yeah. uh, catching two-by-fours as they come flying out of the That's machine. tough work, man, and okay. dangerous work. It very. Um, okay, so... Down here, we have some questions from Dormammu, former co-host of the show. Dormammu, I like it. Yep, Dormammu. All right. Um, so he's actually really good at these kind of things. If we ever do live streams, he will be there. All right. So uh, what was the one toy that you got as a kid that you just couldn't put down? Wow. Uh, my Ninja Turtles. I got some Ninja Turtle sets as a kid, and I played with them nonstop. Like the original ones? Yeah. Like, did you have the ones where the shell opened up and the... Nope. You never had those? The, the original, original ones. Just the, the action figures. Yeah. Well, because, like, the... the. But it, even as a kid, I wasn't inside a lot. You know, I grew up in, you know, Santa Fe and then Hobbs, New Mexico. Uh, and we were outside nonstop. You know, um, I was always outside doing stuff, playing on, on the bike, messing with the dogs, just whatever. Anything not to be inside and cooped up. And then we moved up to Missouri and... Same thing. It was gorgeous country up there. They didn't have a thing called sticker burrs up there. You could walk around barefooted all day long and be just, you might step on a slug and jump, but I mean, but know. other than that, it was, it was nonstop go. Missouri is beautiful country. I mean, uh, never been not a lot to do, but if you like the outdoors, it's a good place to be. Yeah. So like I had, I had a couple of the, like just regular Ninja Turtles back in the day, but, um, I also had the ones where the shell would open up. You could hide their weapons and stuff yeah. inside. And then I had some of the ones where they transformed into like a baby turtle. So that was a weird thing that they did for a little while. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you saw this because you're not a collector person, but they actually did. Um, they started bringing back all those toys. Good. Like if you go, you can go to, well, you could go to Target or Walmart right now and buy all those old Ninja Turtle figures again. Good. So, you know, kids nowadays can know what it's like to play with 80s toys. Mm -hmm. But, like, they've re-engineered all the old He-Man toys that basically only their arms and torsos would move. No. And they added extra articulation. So they can bend at the elbows and okay. stuff like that. It's actually pretty cool. So they look like the old ones, but function like new ones. Good. I don't collect that shit, but, you know, there are those Motu people out there who do collect all that. I hit the wrong button. I was trying to avoid your cough. Sorry. I, <laughs> it's like I turned it on you. It's like cough, <laughs> cough, motherfucker. Look at him go. Yes. So, um, okay. So damn, still hit the wrong fucking button. I'm going to get it right. This is the problem. I keep hitting the wrong button guys. Either way, I'm getting better at blindly hitting the buttons, but I'm getting wrong. I'm getting the whose cameras, what backwards. Right. I'll fix it next week. Damn it. Let's turn it upside down. No, it's just got fucking. <laughs> I, I I don't even know how the cameras got switched. That's the crazy part. They were they're identified by their individual camera ID. Yeah, and somehow got fucking switched. Right, Murphy rides again. Whatever. Okay, so this one is a weird one, and it, you may not have an answer for it. it. Says, who do you think the fans have given a bigger Messiah complex to, Optimus Prime or Spock? Ooh. Spock has a more loyal fan base. And that I wouldn't I'm not so sure about really? that. Yeah, Truckies at this point are probably significantly less than Transformers really? fans. See, I I'm out of the loop. I'm uh, that's not my wheelhouse. Okay. <sighs> I will say I prefer Spock over Optimus. Which is fine. Yeah. But weird. Mm -hmm. But logical. You know what's interesting is there was a comic where the Transformers uh, ran into the Star Trek. Oh, really? Yeah. Was, they, they managed to cross that over some fucking how. Who knows? So, all right. So that one doesn't apply. So for any, now that you guys are getting to know Jeff a little bit better, it's easier to point questions because making assumptions didn't help either <laughs> way. All right. Uh, and and this, this is a fun one. And this is obviously from his point of view. How do we know you're not just a duplicate of Shoki made by AI? You know, side by side, I couldn't defend that 
Uh, we don't know. You're taller than me. I'm the better version. Yeah. Taller doesn't mean better. <laughs> that applies to you too, Ricky. Right. But um, I don't know. Would an AI know it was an AI? If it wasn't told it was an AI. I mean, it depends on how advanced it is. I mean, how much I would an AI I if an AI could AI? I don't know, but that sounds like a fucking rap <laughs> from, from TI. <laughs> so either way. Yeah, so he's 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 real. Um, be, I'm a real boy. Yeah. Because he's on camera right now, and I don't know how to use AI effectively. Yeah. And plus, you know, otherwise it'd be me sitting here drinking with no one, <laughs> which is the usual which was, go-to. <laughs> which is called Saturday night. <laughs> hey, look. I. Uh, me too. Was there Saturday. I, did I? Yes, you did. Is you that, said you were you were doing drinks, and I was doing drinks the same night. On Saturday? No, we spoke yesterday, and you said Saturday we did drinks. Now I'm trying to remember what we did Saturday. Well, we didn't do nothing. No, no, you and I did nothing. I'm, no, Okay, so I got off work Saturday. Was kind of tired. Jessica really didn't feel like doing fuck all. So we really didn't do anything at all Saturday. Sunday, I went and did the drinking. So that was fine. Which, by the way, guys. By the way. We... Damn near one trivia night this week. We was close. So fucking close. We like we were, we were first place for the first two scoring rounds. Yep. It was only the final countdown that we dropped to second place. Uh, we were still tickled. Better than sixth place all, all night long like it was the week before, man. I mean, it was... like, if it's the best we ever do, I'll take it. But it's like, I guess they just got slightly better at the end. Yeah. Like, we missed a couple that should have been easier. But... I think it's just utilizing points, but I mean, like, we utilized our points pretty well. Pretty well. Uh, we had some good rounds where we just aced them. Yeah, I, the fact that we were like when they first did the announcing for scores, and, just and I'm just like, kept not saying our name. I'm like, well, really? There's no way we're first. <laughs> There's no way we're first. And then, sure, fucking enough, we're right? first. And it's like, huh? I don't know what to do with this. Those information. those video rounds where they just showed random clips from different television shows that didn't have the main characters in them. Yeah, those were tough. Well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't the TV shows. It was the the just it was the picture round. Yeah, it wasn't video. It was just pictures. No, it was a picture of a random character from a random scene. Random in individual sets. shows. It, it was random sets. Yeah. So it's like, where was this from? I was like, what the fuck is that? And, you know. Either way, like it's, yeah, I knew one. Uh, the, the only one I knew by heart, I was hundred percent sure of. Yeah, I mean, I did. I did a lot of heavy heavy lifting in one round. Where I literally, the first round, I definitely, I got all the answers. Like, y'all don't have to. Well, there's no point. In, yeah, when you know them like that, it was the video game round. Yes, yeah, the video game round. And I was just like, yep, hey, it's hey. Like, look, I nailed that look, one. Look, it's pizza. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was good. I was like, I'm nailing this shit. And I was like, okay, cool. I was like, finally, we found something I know something about. Conveniently, all the questions were something I knew. Yeah. Um, okay, so for the final question we have here, um, and this is a discussion question. That he it's a so this is uh Sean's thoughts. This is this is a Sean thought. Um do farts have shapes? No, but they have consistencies. So no, hold on. Let me let me explain his thinking process here because he, he actually elaborated to me directly and then he wanted to ask you. Um so Farts kind of have a feeling when they come out. And because some of them have a weird pointy feel sometimes, almost like they're either diamond or triangular like, shaped. Or like throwing a dart. Boop. Yeah. Like throwing a dart out of your butthole. <laughs> so, but then sometimes they feel like a just sphere, just going, boop, and then it just comes straight out and it just, boop. and like when he said it, I like, I knew what he meant. Because Sean's a weirdo. Yeah. But it's, I wish I could. He sent too many voice messages at this but point. Or random random thoughts. Yeah, but he's like, well, because he's very farty that day. Well, I mean, he's usually very farty, so it is what it is. But, I mean, I think he does have a point because it does feel that way sometimes. And, like, and you're right about, like, they can have texture, so to speak, too, because, like, it feels like 
It's weird. Like when you have a rapid succession of farts, they almost feel like if they if really look at look into it, like almost like little like boomerangs like coming out sometimes. It's like it's almost like in the same way. Not to be too gross, a turd can have a different shape depending. Mm-hmm. Uh, a fart seems to have a similar shape depending on what's going on or even how you're sitting. Yep, or what you're sitting on. Yeah, that be, that's what I meant. Like a, my brain didn't put words like a out. church pew. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah, you talk about a sounding board. So, so I would say that in in the case of sitting on a hardwood table or on the table, chair or something along those lines, I would say most farts come out shaped like a hammer because that's what it sounds like <laughs> or pancake. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could definitely feel like some pancake farts or some like disc shape. Also depends on what time of year and how long you've spent outside. Cuz if you're if you're swamp assed, you can get some squeakers going. Well, Swamp ass, I think, doesn't change the shape, just the feeling. Because every time you fart when you're swamp ass, you feel like you shit yourself. Yep. Because Uh oh. It's like (laughs) I don't know if that wetness was already there or not. I'm gonna go find out. I don't know. Fart humor is one of the most universally loved senses of humor. I mean uh for guys. For guys. There's nothing funnier than fart humor. Well, because women lie about laughing at farts. Everybody laughs at farts. Yeah, they just laugh secretly. Yeah. Because Women do love, at least in my case, you know, being very specific here, Jessica loves to point out her farts to me. Y'all have a strange dynamic. Well, we everybody tells us that. But, like, I mean, like, what's funny is some people can be together for, like, 20 years and have never farted in front of each other yeah. for reasons. And then we're the opposite. We're like, fuck it. I don't, I don't get yelled at for farting, but I do get yelled at for farting in the kitchen for some reason. Well, there's food. Location, location. Somebody's location. mouth might be open. <laughs> you know, if you, fart, I mean, if you're in the kitchen and someone like, because I've been in your kitchen, it's, uh, there's not a lot of room. No, but I if mean, I'm like, in a hurry, if I'm in full cook mode, you will right. get run over if you're in the way. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you're say you're in the cooking part and someone's at the dining room, I don't see any reason that farting would be a problem. Right. But if somebody's right behind you, and you let one rip, because that's what just happens. It's life. Yeah. Sure. I mean, but it, it's because your whole dining kitchen area isn't that much smaller or it's roughly the same size as what we got going yeah, on. Similar. If you just cut off the living room, roughly the same area. Um, yeah, it's a tiny little farmhouse built in 1917. Yeah. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. But either way, uh, just, just the idea. So, guys, let us know for you out there in the universe comment down below about oh. your account your conception of fart shapes and if they do have a shape or feel like they have a shape so to speak obviously we know they feel different they smell different we're not talking about that we're just talking about the feeling of it leaving your body having a different feeling now oh, while we're on the while we're on the uh, bathroom humor line do you have any good fart stories fart stories that to this day will still make you laugh i do um as do i so the biggest one that comes to mind so i told a few here before i may have actually told this one here before um it was in fifth grade and they had our desks set up around the room not facing the teacher or whatever so in like a big circle she could teach from the middle or go over to the chalkboard Mm -hmm. on either side right don't know why we decided to set it up. That's just what it was. I think this was our quote unquote science based class. I'm not sure. You know, back then it was like we didn't have labs and shit, right? So uh I don't know if it's by chance or by choice. I was sitting right next to the teacher's desk, you know. So I'm like right right there, number yeah. one. And everybody's kind of being rowdy. The teacher's out for some reason. She she had to go have a discussion with somebody about something. And everybody's just kind of up and doing whatever the fuck they want. And I drop a pencil or a pen, whatever the fuck. I drop a utensil of some sort on the floor next to me. And I will demonstrate here on camera what happened. So teacher's desk is pretty much right there. Yeah. Like that, that, that best of there. I forgot this uh, arm doesn't get out of the way. I lean over and take the entire rig with me. I lean over like this, stretch way oh, over, of course, and let out an enormous, 
enormous fart in that grade school well, plastic chair. Well, at that point, you basically took the balloon neck and s stretched it. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, once again, sitting in that <laughs> hard plastic grade school chair. Yes. And it stopped the class. <laughs> but thank God the teacher was out of the room. Because <laughs> what the fuck would that have been if I just let out this? And I mean, this was all-time greatest level of fucking volume fart <laughs> and, it, and it just came out like it was there wasn't a a shit maya maya huh yeah and it was just like i mean i gotta go do that here in a minute realistically is what's gonna happen because <laughs> that's some gurgling going on already but still <laughs> um but that was that was pretty fucking epic there yeah all right so what do you got then um didn't happen to me it was told to me by Oh, that doesn't count. Well, it does because it's hysterical. I met this gentleman named Jim uh, from Scotland. He was a contractor over here working. We met at Molly's Pub. I basically keep him from getting his ass beat by a coworker. Okay. Tiny little old man in tweed jacket with patches on the elbows. Is it the coworker or Tim? No. No. Who Who are you describing? Um, Jim. Jim. Sorry, I said Tim. Yeah, his coworker's big, huge English dude. Okay. About, about so whooped his ass. Jim is the tiny guy. Uh, he was about to punch him. I grabbed his hand, spun him around, and said, "Hi." Want to play? And he did not. So anyway, Jim, he's probably shorter than my shoulder. Tiny, tiny little Scottish fella. We're sitting there drinking, hanging out. And he starts telling a story about him going to a wedding. And his wife, German woman, gorgeous lady named Heldy, um, joins him at the wedding. He gets off the red-eye flight. And uh, you've been to a uh, Catholic mass? Yes. Stand up, sit down, stand up, kneel, stand up. And he was, he was tore up. He was hungover, tore up, and jet lagged. And it got real quiet. Everybody no. sat down. And he said, I farted. <laughs> and it was loud. <laughs> and it was long. <laughs> he said it, it, it echoed. <laughs> it, it echoed. He said that the whole sanctuary stops, stares at him. And in a stage whisper, he leans to his wife and says, don't worry, dear. I'll tell everybody it was me. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Count Dankula. But, man, uh, I hope he comes back, man. I'd love to hang out with him again, but that shit's funny. he hadn't been back to the States in years. That shit is funny. Oh, I forgot we did have one other, we did have one other question. Why? Well, why not? Also, fuck you, whoever wrote why. <laughs> why, why questions? He just said, why? Well, we need content. No, we didn't. Yeah, I mean, like, we can always do content. There's, there's always shit to talk about. I mean, like, the bloodbath. The impending bloodbath. I mean. Which one? Nah, I'm just not going to get into it. Yeah. It's just the, the, new, the new news cycle about Trump. It's the bloodbath. Either way. So, um, trying to think of other fart stories. Like, because like the that's my favorite one. Because the thing, with, at least with me, I mean, I have plenty that I can probably pull out, but like most of them are like me and Jessica, because uh, we'll get into fart offs. Uh huh. But it's not on purpose. We're not trying to outdo each other. It's just Sunday morning, and we're both awake in bed. Yeah. And you know, the Sunday morning farts are usually pretty, pretty epic. Oh, my favorite um, crop dusting old ladies at Walmart or grocery stores. Oh come. On. Because they're so polite, they'll just go, phew, In, phew. Inappropriate. <laughs> inappropriate. Oh, very appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I did just have one. It, it must have been Saturday night. And it was a tiny little. <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh, that one's probably going to be bad. So, and, <laughs> and we're facing away from each other. So she's watching videos on her side, and I'm watching videos on my side. And she's like. And I, I by, by then I already had my CPAP on, so and she's like, "Uh, yeah, it is." <laughs> she's like, Ugh. And I'm like, "Sorry." You better watch. She's one one day she's gonna fart into your CPAP. I mean, <laughs> it, look, she's done bad enough. Like, so her her goals that's like hot boxing on a whole completely different first, level. First of all, she won a hundred percent. Her goal in life, she has two goals in our relationship. One is to get pregnant and have, have children. The other goal is to eventually hotbox me with a fart. Oh, God. Like, cut, get me under the covers and then trap yeah. me with a fart. She has tried 
many, 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 <laughs> many times. And I usually thwart her because I am stronger and smarter. Well, unless she, if you have the CPAP on, you're good. You've got positive pressure. You're, you're no worries. Should be good. Should be good. <laughs> but I caught a whiff of my own fart because it drifted up into the... <laughs> <laughs> Careful, he almost yoinked everything off the desk. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so like I, I, I almost, uh, it almost drifted up into my actual intake, which is right next to the bed. Yeah. So that would have, that would have sucked. The dog got me once. Which dog? It was Lola. Okay. Big eighty pound bulldog. Yeah. She got me, and it was rough. I was out of that bedroom in a hurry outside. Dude, so we go over to her mom's house, and they've got a bunch of dogs. And two of them are really bad about farts. Um, Tiddlywinks, otherwise known as uh, football, because she's the football. You pick her up. Chihuahua or Dachshund? No, she's actually a... Uh, a da, 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 da. Terrier? No, what are the tiny fluffy things? Yorkie. No, the other ones. Pomeranian. That one. So she's a tiny Pomeranian, but colored like a... Like a uh, da, 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 Doberman, basically. Okay. Pincher colors. Either way, um, she's in charge because she's the smallest. Of course. But she will just let one rip. And you, you'll just be holding her in your lap. Now, she, talk about a fart with texture. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's sticky and bad. It's, it's horrible. And, like, the other one's bad. Roxy would do it, too. She's a bigger. We're not sure what she is exactly. She definitely got some healer. And just a Heinz 57, good mud. Yeah, she's a, she's a mud, but she's she's a really good. Dog. I'll take a mud over a purebred any day. Yeah, but she will let him go, and you won't hear it ever. Like, you almost <laughs> never hear. Like, hearing a dog fart it would be weird because usually they're silent. I hear them and all the time deadly. with Lola. Really? really? She's the fartness dog I've ever seen. And she's got a farting and burping. Really? As I'm burping into the mic. Yeah, she'll walk up to you, get, scratching her head, just go. Bleh. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard a dog burp that I can recall. Come hang out. If something, if something is happening like that, it's usually vomit coming out or something. No, she just never... burps. So much love, it overflows into a burp. <laughs> right. <laughs> or as, as Jessica says at dinner time, you know, not, not bad manners, just good food. Right, right. You burp at dinner. Which, yeah, I agree. Well, that's one reason why I, I don't care if I burp on the podcast. I'm just like, fuck it, it's me. You know, people get it. Right. It's like I don't have to. It's like I'm tired of pretending who I am. It who I am. It. Am it. Am it. Damn it. Am not. I'm making <laughs> am not into a contraction. Am it. Am it. I'm gonna put that on a shirt. <laughs> I am who I am. It. It's kind of like Ewan's. No Ewan's. Look, I had to explain Ewan's to people. And I know Ewan's. That originated in Missouri. Yeah. It's like I like. I've ex- I tried to explain you in speech. I mean, if you've I don't got like understand it. three or four people, that's y'all. But if it's a group, you know, six, seven, eight, ten, that's Ewan's. Yeah. Well, Ewan's is y'all plus three. According to Foxworthy, yes. Yes. Well, I mean, well, not specifically three, but over three. Yeah, three plus. But three, remember, plus three plus y'all. I was probably sixth grade when we, sixth, fifth or sixth it's grade like rolling when, a dice. when we moved to Missouri and we went to church. And the first day in Sunday school, uh, Sunday school teacher sits us down and says, All right, Ewan's, listen up. Huh? Ewan's. Well, what the hell's Ewan's? I've, I've, ne- I've never heard anybody actually use the word unironically. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, they don't really use it in Texas. I'll catch myself slipping. Yeah. That's why uh, That's why my accent's not really Texan. It's not really Northern. It's uh, the New Mexico, Missouri, Texas hybrid. Yeah. You have a, ver- you have a, you have a specific country well, accent. Well, in New Mexico, everybody talks so fast, even when they're speaking English, because they're all coming from Spanish speaking backgrounds. So yeah. You speak with a lot of speed. Mm. And in New Mexico, they think they have to say everything at once or they're not going to get a word in edgewise. Yeah. But then up in Missouri, everything slowed down a little bit. And you get to talk in kind of the Missouri cadence and yeah. listen to people tell a good little story. A story. Then down here, it's it's Texas. Yeah, it's a mix of all the things. So I'm screwed up and a little off. Yeah. So actually on the... Uh... What? What the heck is just... Squirrel! Text text messages in the middle, in the middle of a podcast. We're we're Jamie. We're in the middle of recording right now. Quit texting me. I know we're not live streaming, but I'm telling you in the future. <laughs> it is what it is. You said there are ponchos. Is there still a ponchos open? Walmart. What? What do you mean? No, no, no. Ponchos, 1960 and 59. And yes, I want to go. <laughs> Wait, you're telling me the one in 1960 is still open? That's correct. 
I used to go to that one as a kid. Uh, when I worked down there doing the uh, the specialty courier work, I'd go there at, every couple months. Oh, by the way, I need to put you in touch with a guy because he is looking at getting into such a thing. Which one? Oh, maybe he means pinchos, not ponchos. Yeah, maybe it probably means pinchos. Oh, the courier thing, yeah. Yeah, the courier thing. Because he's looking at getting into some type of work around here. It's hard work. Yeah, I mean, it, you make as much as you want to. The only reason I made decent money is because I was all, always available, always on the move, always doing yeah. long distance stuff, and just go, go, go. Yeah, I think that's what he's looking at. You know, well, he wants to do local. He won't make any money. Nah, that's what I was thinking. But I mean, even with even if you jump in with the courier service, um, you uh, you're basically going to catch a shit jobs the first two months until you prove you're you're dependable. Yeah, I made the mistake of making myself almost indispensable, so I was nonstop go all the time. Yeah, that's probably what I would do if I was going to do something like that. But I was um, never home. Yeah, I was doing five thousand miles a month at least in the van. Yeah, which realistically ain't that hard to manage. But it, yeah, it's not that hard. But you're constantly gone. Um, well, that's what I mean. I'm saying if five thousand miles is not that hard to do. I did a lot of camping in the van, air up mattress in the back. And yeah, me and my dogs. Uh, I'd take either Nixie or uh, started out the Bandit, then I got River. Yeah. And uh, Nixie joined us later. So I'd rotate every day. Yeah. So each dog every day never knew when we'd come home. Yeah. Because uh, one day River and I were out for a week and a half. Just yeah. nonstop. One day we were gone for a week and a half. <laughs> I mean, it was, we was busy. Yep. That makes sense. I like how you're doing the same adjusting I used to do in that chair. Well, because, yeah. I'll still be doing adjusting in that chair because it's my review chair. Yeah. So please don't break it. Well, I won't break it. You haven't broke it yet. That I know of. <laughs> We'll find it. Um, not, not like I'm doing trick dismounts or anything off the damn. Thing. You would. You never know. It I mean, doesn't. It doesn't roll that good. You might do a trick dismount without trying. A couple more of these, maybe. Yeah, we don't need much more of that. <laughs> we might bust open a copperhead select here in a minute. Possibly. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take a bathroom break. Maybe a peanut Embar- butter chaser. Embarrassing. Might actually have to do it. Actually, that select with a peanut butter chaser would be nice. Ew. I'm in. No. Ew. Ew. Maybe throw a lime in it. Peanut butter? No. In the, <laughs> Ew. <laughs> in, the, in the select. Oh, so I do have one problem. My lumbar support is all the way down to my ass crack. Hey. And it's sweaty. What? There you go. I <laughs> See, how do you like it? <laughs> no, I understand, but I was leaning because I had to be able to get to my lumbar pad that's in my butt. It's supposed to be on my back, not yeah. in my butt. But somehow it manages to work well, it's a, itself down. That's well, a lumbut, lumbut pad. Yeah, it's not as funny as you thought it would be. No, it wasn't. Look good on paper. Yeah, did it? Let's put it on paper and find out. <laughs> <laughs> we always say that. Well, it looks good on paper. Does it? <laughs> but okay, I'm in. No. <laughs> <laughs> lumbut. No. Oh. Well, the problem. Okay, so that right there is exactly how it moves. So it's actually on on. You can see the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see the thing there. So it's got two stretchy. So you need to make them tighter. Well, there's no tightening them. Tie not. They're they're as tight as they're going to be, but the problem is that it, it shouldn't move. Mm. Need to find a way to fix it without fixing it. A fix it. A fix it. A fix with an uh. So, uh. Need to stick them at it. Gotcha. That. Um. Well, shit. Other than that, I mean, let's see. I mean, that's worth. We're not even an hour yet. We've I know done, we ran out of things. We've done so much talking. We're we, not we've even done an hour. no. Pre-show planning, so we have nothing to talk about. Well, we have plenty to talk about because I mean we've been watching TV shows, so presumably. Presumably, yeah. So, have you been watching anything? No, not even at work. No, uh, NCIS. Oh, you didn't continue your Peacemaker watching. I- I'll get there. Damn it! Last night I got on the zone, and the eleven hours just kind of flew flew by. I had yeah. no problem. It was a short shift for me. It was easy. Nice. I mean, uh, I did watch. I didn't watch anything new last week. Realistically, I watched the Spaceman. Yeah, we talked about that already. Uh, yeah, we did. That was really good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh, wait. We talked about it. We haven't talked about it here. No, we have not. Yes. So, you talk about your experience with Spaceman then. It was a very simply shot movie. Um, With a very simple premise, and not a lot went on. Well, and everything progressed very slowly. But for some reason, I was still captivated by it. It was well shot, well produced, and well acted. Adam Sandler completely surprised me with how well he did with that very serious role. 
and uh, he owned it, man. It was great. So one thing about it that I thought was weird while watching it was that um, he looks like death, like right off the bat. Well, he's 168 days by himself. and 186 days. And he's in zero gravity. Yeah. So he, he, they did a really good job making his face look puffier. And, make you know, when you're in zero G, your blood doesn't drop because of gravity. So everything puffs up. So that's why I look like death warmed over. Yeah, but also, like, I think because of everything he'd been going through throughout it, I think that, you know, he's just not. No, it left him very stoic and very almost mechanical that, at the beginning. But that could also be the check part of it. Yeah. Because they were very check about things. But then, you know, he started breaking down. and Well, the, after, and I already forgot what the spider, what he named the spider. It's like started with an H. Hamish? I think it was Hanush. Hanush. Yeah. Yeah. So he named the spider Hanush, which was the name of a kid that was, it is a long story. It was a, it was a fa- it was a check fable. Yeah. So the whole thing there, but, um, something about flying the stars, something yeah. is, they, 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 it gets really confusing, especially yeah. when they're mixing it in with memories that, he, that they're showing. Um, what, wh- what bothered me was Hanush never called him by name. It was always small human or fragile human. Yeah. Was it fragile or frail human? Yeah, frail human. Yeah. Or skinny human. Skinny human. That was yeah. what he used most skinny of. Human. Skinny human. But he but, never called him But he, he did tell him his name. Yeah, he told him his name, but he never referred he, to him he as He just Yuckle. referred to him as a descriptor. Yeah. Skinny human. Yeah. Skinny human. He was I, so I creepy. To, the the mandibles with the little mouth in the back. I, I told you the mouth was weird. It reminded me of the, uh, the family guy bit with the aliens. The little mouth popped up and we went, hey, I'm the little mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But, like, for me, it, it wasn't even the mouth. The mouth was creepy, but it was the tentacles when he would grab well, things. Those were um, essentially manipulator arms. That's how he'd kind of manipulate things in front of his face. Yeah, yeah, but they were tentacles. They weren't, like, ang- they weren't. They didn't have elbows. They were just straight-up tentacles. I guess I've read enough oddball sci-fi that uh, that's not a big surprise. That's common in a lot of, uh, quote-unquote, scientific fake fictional species. And, and I get that, but it is just weird because the rest of him just looks like regular spider until the guy's like, Cause it, well, it makes sense that those would have developed in the, the fictional species because, you know, his legs are big and huge and out here and it's hard to get everything back here. Yeah. So he, he gets it halfway and the little manipulator arms hang on to the rest. Well, because spiders have those anyways. You know, they have they have the little faux arms, yeah. faux legs out front. Kind of like crabs have around their mouth. Exactly. Yeah, but they're exactly. not tentacles. Yeah, but these were. Yeah. But then, like, whenever it got to the point where, sorry. <laughs> so, I talked about it briefly because I didn't want to spoil much for you last week. But like, the first scene when he has the dream about the spider under his skin, yes, and then he wakes up and Hanush is there. Yes, was that a dream or did it that happen? That was foreshadowing. But did it happen? That was foreshadowing because the same thing happened to Hanush when he just disappeared and disintegrated. Well, so the same thing happened, but it, that was the species that he said wiped out his fam or his whole his race race. Yeah. So a completely parasitic. Yeah. Yeah. A parasitic thing that like basically eats whatever from the inside out. And then also watching him slowly die over that last like 20 minutes. Holding the friggin' Nutella jug. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I told you that was session. Oh, rough. Sad, dude. Tastes like home. It, yeah, it was sad. And then, like once again, they never explained. They didn't explain a lot. They didn't explain. You anything. just uh, they, they 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 referenced things and referred things via context, and that's yeah. all you got. Yeah. And so, like the purple cloud, it is somehow. What is it? Why is it? How is it? We don't, the we don't know. Beginning in the end, it is time. We, we it see is the all. purple dots floating around and going through everything, yeah. but we don't know why. They're just temporal particles yep. that flow through existence it, they try to trap it and it doesn't happen so was that essentially a rip in time i think so is the point or space time i think it was a rip in space time so but it was allowing time and space to fold over to be whatever that's why he was having visions of the past so it's not n- not quite an einstein rosen bridge but more of just a rip in space well, it wasn't time. a wormhole yeah well, it didn't go anywhere yeah. but it allowed at least the energy from past and future to be present be present the in the time. same place yeah. and to be perceived at the same time that's so, the trippy part because yeah. he saw everything because he was seeing he never saw the future that we know of 
that we know of. But he definitely was revisiting the past through Hanusha's therapy. Therapy via a giant alien spider, basically. And a big spider hug. <laughs> that Which, bothered me. I mean, it. my question was, was he warm? Or fuzzy? He was definitely fuzzy. Definitely fuzzy. Um, but, but was but the question is, or, does he have body heat? Was it bristly or like hugging a golden retriever? He looked kind of soft, if I'm honest. Yeah, but like the fuzzy skin. Wuzzy. But you see what I meant when I when I described him. He looks at some point. He looks shaped like a gorilla, like he has a gorilla head with eight eyes or whatever. Yeah, it, it's really weird. But also, well, he also had that upright thorax. He was kind of like a spider centaur looking thing. But he didn't sit on top of the legs. It's just the front part of him. But he was taller. Uh, yeah, it was just taller. He still walked like a normal spider. But he had ten legs. He had eight legs plus the manipulator arms. No, he had. There were 10 legs, I counted, during the spider hug. He had five on each side. Going to have to go back and check. The, the big long ones? Hold on. Let me go. Let me do a Google. No, no let me do a Google, because I want to see. Because I was bored going, 10? Yeah. Space man. Spider hug. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to say giant spider. Images. Let me see. Does he have? Unless it was the tentacles wrapping around his neck. More than likely, Which, that's what it was. But that okay. would have meant his face would have been right here. Hold on. <laughs> no, he's got eight legs proper. But, and then he's got uh, But the, on the thorax that comes up, there's another set. I'm seeing one. Oh, that's looking at the hug. I'm looking at him standing there. So specifically, yeah, it was the tentacles were, uh, is what you were seeing as extra hands. So if his tentacles were where they're supposed to be and they're wrapping around his shoulders, uh-huh. that means Hanush was right here. Uh-huh. All up in his face. Oh, good gosh. That's so weird. All up in his face, dude. All <laughs> up, yeah. <laughs> the, oh, what was really funny was the, uh, yeah, because right in this image specifically, you can see that he's got eight okay. legs. Yeah. I the, counted ten appendages. No, what? Yeah, he's got ten appendages. Well, I mean, like I said, a lot of spiders do have little. They're not really legs. They are like that. They they're like manipulators. Arms. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're kind of like they pull things to the mouth, as you were saying. Yeah. But like the oh, here's where he's almost dead. Oh, he started to lose his hair. I mean, oh. like the thing is, like you do start sympathizing with the weird, crazy giant spider. Well, eventually. He meant no harm. Yeah. But then he left when he got disgusted and disappointed and. Yeah. yeah, but that was also basically to force him to do the right thing. Tough love. But yeah. because he also could see the future in a way. He knew he, knew he had to done. Be. Oh, actually, here's a spider hug right here. Oh, that's why you said there's five. Yeah, that is the tentacles. Yeah, 100%. And they're right coming here. over his neck or shoulders? Yeah, that's the tentacles. His head is right here. Oh, his head, okay. Yeah, so his head is right here over the shoulder. Okay, so he wasn't motorboat in the spider face. No. It was off to one side. <laughs> but I see why you said that. Yeah, you're right. There's five on each side for that reason. But then he has the, the big mouth. The mouth. The mandibles. The, the, they're not mandibles. They're just there. Big the, flappy parts. They're flappy parts, but they don't they, have like anything else going on. They're like big fuzzy butt cheeks. They look like butt cheeks. <laughs> they look like... they look like Because uh, I always thought that's where the extra legs were, but it's not. For anybody who can't see, I can't pull it up on the camera here, but I would. Actually, I can. Hold on, give me just a second. That's why he doesn't like being touched. Actually, I think that was a weird part People of it. People will grab his face and clap them cheeks, you know? Shut up. Ah. <laughs> Hold on. Let me pull this up right quick. Okay, there we go. So for everybody on the Patreon, you can see but, the spider hug. But that was why the hug was such a big deal. He hated being touched. He freaked the fuck out yeah. when he went to touch him. Yeah, the second time he slammed his ass up against the wall. Yeah. Like, that was the thing. But that was when he was begging him to stay. And he got angry at him, which was, that was scary. Because, like, yeah, he literally meant no harm, but he looked like he was about to heart him. Or heart, heart him? Heart him. I, I was reading. And he talking. did heart him. I should stop talking and reading at the same time. Um, I haven't seen any reviews of the movie yet, and I need to, because I actually enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, like you said, it, it, it was It was creepy. a very surreal watch. That, that was literally the... the the basis of was sur- surreality yep. or surrealism. And every once in a while, it's really nice to see something that often that makes you think and, but, and, and then ultimately does more than just visually entertain. Yeah. And then ultimately knowing that he probably did fix the relationship with his wife. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it was mostly dialogue though. And it's all it was, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Kevin Smith movies, so I, I don't mind a bunch of dialogue throughout the movie. It, it helps. Yeah. Well, I mean, the only action was repeated shit over and over. Yeah. 
until it came down to needing to collect whatever. And then the his fuck. wife running and running and running, and then yeah. figuring out. Yeah, that was weird though. She they she got a phone call at the end, and that's about the only conversation they had through the whole movie directly yeah. outside of flashbacks. Yeah. Well, what I thought was interesting, the idea that a pregnant woman had to a pregnant unmarried woman had to seek asylum somewhere to have a baby. I don't think that was the case. I think that was an optional place she could have gone if but she that's didn't have where, support. But that's where she decided to go because of the situation. Well, she felt she didn't have a choice. I mean, you know, she left. Well, she did doctor. try to go to family, and I guess it didn't work out. No, that, that was her mom she was hanging out with. Yeah, but I think there was that weird part where the government's clearly trying to get her to go back and all this other stuff. It's for the PR. That's it. That's well, that's the only thing the government cared about was maintaining their yeah. mission, maintaining and, their stock prices, maintaining the their capital coming. Yeah, and then you see what I mean where it was like a multinational organization but run through the Czech Republic. Yeah, kind of like the boys where all they cared about was their bottom line. True, but I'm talking about just the way that like you'd think it would just be all Eastern Europeans doing this shit, which clearly it wasn't because she was British. You know, it was so weird. It was, hey, I need to use this uh, fumigator. Okay, but before you do, you have to say the lines. Yeah, say all the lines. Yeah, You have to put in a plug before you use it. Yeah, but the weird part is that wasn't recorded or sent out to anyone. So why did he have to Everything it? was recorded. And it's cameras supposedly, everywhere. But yeah. the cameras weren't working. That was part of his mission. He had to fix the cameras. Well, he, he was talking to him. The only the camera that was working. And that's why they used that camera for that, that plug. Yeah. Oh, I guess. Yep. By then. Yeah, because later on, all, it the had him right all here. of he, the cameras He had everything with him. He was about to utilize it, and he yeah. said, well, do the line first. Yeah. But he was like, no, by the time he actually set the shit off and said that, I thought he was in the spacesuit. Yes. You know, which means he was not on camera. He was only over the comms. No, he used the... Actually, he did. He suited up, and then he, then he fumigated. Yes, because he needed. He's like, I'm going to do this because I think we have contamination. We're like, okay, and but. Uh, and Hanush just went, yeah, I'm okay, whatever. Yeah, but the weird part is, of course, later he does the fumigation. To I keep try wanting to, to call him Oot. I don't, don't know why, because you're weird and stuck on another giant spider creature. <laughs> Obviously, no. This is Hanush. Hanush, not you, ugly thing. Yeah, I mean, he was unattractive as a giant spider. Kind of cute though, at the end. But the ice spiders from Star Wars are significantly worse. Yeah. Those are much, much scarier. Unless you're a Jedi and you can harmonize with them, in which case they'll leave you the fuck alone. But they're not as creepy looking. The gray spiders, as they're called in, in Legends. But, um... Uh, shit, I'm trying to think. I definitely... Oh, uh, we watched... I forgot to mention this. So we did watch a the new Dr. Phil live from Adam Ray. Uh, we I, had, I had trouble getting into those. Really? I did. I find them fucking funny. But that's just me. So we watched the new one, which was the longest one so far, because it was like essentially two hours. Yeah. And that was Tiffany Haddish and Anthony Jeselnik. So they basically like combined two episodes into one. So they they filmed it all in one, but somehow made it in like two separate ep- or two oh, episodes. They just edited one. it for two separate. No, no. I, they shot it all at one thing okay but for some reason it was set up like two separate episodes now mind you i fell asleep a little bit near the end of it it was getting late and i was just tired and i was laying on the couch on on, on jessica basically and so i was just like yeah at some point so i missed a little bit of it but there was some definitely definite hilarity especially in anthony, the anthony jeselnik section because he does that straightforward like deadpan comedy yeah and i love it but sometimes I can't get on board with it. But when he's got someone to play off of, it's even better. He's bet he he'd probably be really good at improv, the yes and and keep he's good moving. at the yes anding for yeah. sure. Usually you just see him standing there talking about very awkward situations very slowly. Yeah. And I like that. But to see him trying to play off of Dr. Phil when he knows it's Adam Ray. Right. Like that's the part that everybody who knows they're like they're all clearly friends with Adam Ray for the most part. He does look an awful lot like Dr. Phil when he does that get up. I mean, they do a good job, but he does not look like Dr. Phil. Like, uh, still funny. But I love the the comedy sponsor stitches he does in the show. So, like, he does his own commercials. Mm-hmm. Some are fake, some are real. But he'll do them in a character. But he'll film skits with other comedians and stuff like that. See that big old yawn happening yep. there. 
It is what it is. What I, I give him alcohol, he wants to fall asleep. Yeah, pretty much. I had to retrain my brain for years. Yeah. I mean, it got to where I was drinking entirely too much. So I did a, a more of a Freudian Pav- or a Pavlovian training method. Yeah. And uh, I made my brain associate alcohol with bedtime. Mm. So I'd have a couple drinks, and instead of sitting there drinking more, I'd go to bed. Well, we won't drink much more then, because we don't need you to go to sleep here. Yeah, maybe later. Yeah, later, <laughs> but like not now. I'll catch a nap for work tonight. shit to do. Yeah, so, yeah. And I don't have men's group tonight, so I'm fine there. Oh, heck yeah. Well, I mean, I can go. I'm just choosing not to. Because I don't... Uh, Where's that at tonight? Copperhead's closed. Uh, on Mondays, it's a, if it's at uh, Coffee Numpong. Ah. Um, and then Tuesdays for the women's group is Coffee Numpong. So, and they actually stay up, stay open late just for us. So uh, they actually changed their hours. They're closing at six now during the week. I'm like, wow. And my son started going to a Bible study, and uh, they they picked a certain coffee shop because they closed at a certain time, so they'd ha- they'd have to end it uh, on time. Right, right. Um, damn, like, because I got we were so focused earlier on other things that I forgot all the shit I watched. Um. Cause I watch, you know, I catch up on podcasts and stuff like that on the weekends, usually at work. And then, um, like I watched the uncut podcast to make sure if there was anything I needed to edit out, I usually watch that while I'm at work. Oh, so I mentioned last week that Jessica wanted to potentially do a podcast. Yeah. So we did a trial run on Wednesday with the patrons and it was all like political stuff. And it was interesting. I won't go into a, a whole lot of it here, but like, it, she's always had thoughts and feelings on things when they come up, but doesn't know a lot about the certain topics. So, so she, she she can express how she feels, but not discuss the topic itself and knowledge. Correct. So she's learning a lot more, and and becoming a bit more knowledgeable on things. And well, that's like, one of the things that's fallen apart is um, people are more concerned with how they feel than with what fact is. Well, yeah, obviously. So the term facts don't care about your feelings. Pretty much. But also feelings don't care about facts. Well, it, it's that will, it's a lot of willful ignorance. and that, that's, or, or, that ir- or willful disbelief. Yeah, and that irritates me. Uh, yeah. People not being open to discussion, not being open to a different opinion. I just realized you have your headphones on backwards. Oh, man. I just realized. So I'm like... There's a cord missing. <laughs> like, it was like, something's not right there. Either way, it's not a big deal. I just realized. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's not going to do anything other than, like, for me, I'm more deaf in my right ear. So, I, you know. Oh, I've got ridiculously default. good hearing. Yeah. I mean, I can hear irritating things. Across, my phone vibrating from the other side. <laughs> I can of hear house. irritating things like my wife, the dog, the kid. <laughs> <laughs> It's like I hear irritating things all the time, no matter where I am. They you know, just uh, keep finding high me. High frequency noises bother the hell out of me. Yeah. I mean, I can hear them well out of most people's ranges. Yeah. And they bug me. See, I've got tinnitus, so, or tinnitus, as they say. Ma. Um, <laughs> Ma. Yeah. Well, it is, I think technically speaking, it is supposed to be tin- tinnitus. But either way, uh, for me, I, I've had, well, I've had hearing, hearing problems since I was born. I was born 100% deaf in my right ear. Developed hearing over time. So I did a whole lot of hearing tests when I was young, and I was like, I was missing the connection between the inner ear and everything else. Yeah, it just wasn't there. Part of part of being a preemie, so things weren't going to be in the right spot. Eventually, it grew into where maybe I got like seventy five percent max, mm-hmm. and like so, I hear highs a little bit better out of my right ear, and I hear lows better out of my left ear. Yeah, but it makes it awkward when I've got earbuds. Because I thought for the longest time that my right earbud was just broken, dying. No, not, no, no, because it would sound even over time, but then eventually it would get the right one would get quieter and quieter. Until a little while ago, my current Raycons that I have, the left one has a hardware glitch where it won't hold charge for more than about two hours. I had a similar issue with some JBLs I had. Nice yeah. nice earphones, but yeah. they completely, one of them just died, and then I couldn't get the company to do anything about it. Yeah, so Raycons are known for doing this. I have, I had a pair. Aren't been, those a lifetime guarantee? Yeah, fuck it. It's like, they're cheap enough, I don't care. So, but the thing is, is like, I had a fancy set that they sent me to review, and then the left one 
died on me. Like, just flat out wouldn't yeah. fucking work. And, like, it was getting quieter and quieter and quieter. And one of the main causes of that is earwax buildup on the... On the forcing gun. On the thing. But then clean it off, and then it kept doing it. So it just got worse and worse. However, what I discovered the other a few weeks ago, when my left one died on me, and I was like, okay, well, the right side is so quiet, I can't hear. I said, what if I just put the right one in my left ear? And I went, boop, you know, put it upside down, basically. And I was like, that is as loud as the left one. Yeah. The problem is me. So I actually have noticeable hearing loss in my right ear now. And given what I do in the vehicles I work in, being incredibly loud is probably what has led to most of this damage. Yeah, you probably need to get some hair, uh, earbuds that'll go over your ear that you can wear pretty much all day and well, still hear. I mean, mine worked for that fine. They've got some shooting here uh, earbuds that are linked in the back. Yeah. That you can take calls and listen to things over. Yeah. But they have a, uh, a protection mode. When, it, when it, you shoot shoot around, it goes yeah. off, it cuts out. Well, these already have sound deadening. Okay. And, and they're actually very good for that. And that's one reason why I don't like to work without them, because everything is too loud, whether it's fans, engine noise, vibration, yep. whatever. Um, that's where I'm at with mine. They've got the foam, like ear earplug foam the one you yeah. roll up um, the, the the silicone instead I, of silicone it's foam yeah and they I, I use them for the shop mower gun range everything. yeah i've seen i've seen those and like the, the problem is the i have to J have lab epic air sports yes i know exactly the ones you're talking about hundred dollars set tile built in you can find each individual earbud independently yeah. through through the tile app yeah that saved my butt so, so many times so i know the ones you're talking about and i might look into them after because I, what i just did was since these are giving me a problem and I don't like the, they're a similar model, but the same model or not the same model yeah. that Jessica has. So I just said, screw it this weekend. Well, and they, they were doing a 20% off sale. Well, they also have a very good ambient active mode. Yeah. Where they uh, enhance and let you hear everything around you. Yeah. Recon does that too. So, uh, so I just bought a replacement set because they were 20% off. Uh, they were just doing a sale. So I said, screw it. And I couldn't get the ones I wanted. I wanted to buy these ones. And they're like sold out. I was like, God damn it. Okay. I'll save the money. I'll just get the same fucking thing I already have. Also a brand to look into is Plug Phones. P-L-U-G Phones. Mm -hmm. um, they use the same silicone, triple insulated, um, triple baffled yeah. earplug with sound coming through them. They have a, I'm thinking about ordering them. It's called their Duo. Mm -hmm. It's one charging pack with two sets of earbuds. So you always have a charged one ready to go. Interesting. Um, oh, oh, so so the main the main glitch mine has is that the left one never actually turns off. So you put them in the charging case, and it doesn't really turn off. It's like so it, your phone keeps trying to link up to it. It does, and but if it's that's charging, annoying. but if it's charging, excuse me, wasn't you? <laughs> but I was trying to trying to determine what it was. What kind of vehicle? That's a fun guess. It's like, what was that? Um, so when you put it in the case and close it and put it on a charger, it won't connect. However, if you take it off and the, it drains the battery of the charging case, then it will automatically connect no yes. matter what you're doing. And it, and I have no way to fix it. And I'm tired and it drains the battery a hundred percent every time. Right. So, and it won't hold a charge for more than two hours on that one. See, I get eight out of those uh, J Labs. Well, the, I get eight out of the Recon when they work. Yeah. It, but the, I've had these for several years now. So what I'm going to do, so this is a teaser for everybody, because uh, I've done reviews of them in the past. So I still have my original set that I bought years ago. I have the ones they sent me that are dead and busted. I have the ones that Jessica that I bought for Jessica. That you absconded with? No, those are still hers because I don't like that model. Yeah, like okay. they're, they're the same shape, but I don't like the functionality or the sound. And so I will talk about what's gone on with these after See, those several could, years of daily those use. Those couldn't work for me. I like the ones that hook over the ear. See, I don't, I, that would drive me nuts. Well, because I'm doing so much of the shop. I'm well, always I mean, moving, I'm, sweat, I'm, everything. I mean, look at what I do. I'm moving but, around quite a lot. Yeah, but if it but, pops out, it just hangs. And I'm but I also wear glasses. So having True. something that goes over the ear is not good for me because even, even during COVID times when I had to wear a mask, it was really uncomfortable to wear the earbuds because it was pulling my ears down and popping them out. In fact, like one of them fell out of the, fell out of my ear one time because basically the detention of the mask hooks 
basically yoinked them out of my ear at that point. And I almost didn't realize that it fell it fallen out of my ear because I was paused. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm listening to stuff all day, music, podcast, whatever. Yeah. Not usually music anymore. And so that's, that's the thing with people bitch. They're like, well, they're not the best thing for music. You only got like this many settings. And I'm like, okay, but I'm not using them for music. Exactly. I, I, it I, may be once or twice a week I actually listen to music. Yeah. I'm listening to people talking. Or audiobooks or anything. Something, which is still you people know, talking. That motorcycle I'm working on, it's got a full-on speaker system. I'm not going to rebuild. I'll probably never use it. Yeah, just keep I'm going to do woods. a comms unit in my helmet because it'll sound real goofy going down the highway blasting an audiobook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, because I, I hear I them at stoplights constantly blaring music really loud. It would just be funny if you're just listening to Jordan Peterson read. <laughs> it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. <laughs> was it, though? Was it? Uh, um, fuck. I'm just tired now. And I still got a lot to do today. Like, even after you leave, I'm going to film some stuff because I didn't film it already. And I've been lazy. You're going to take a nap. So that's what you No, gonna... <laughs> see, that's what I don't need to do. And so, look, this this part of the thing is like, one, I need to get in some exercise because I'm fat and gross. Uh, and then I need to do the thing. One, one of the hardest things for me is just doing the thing I need to do instead of finding the excuse. Right. And I found excuse for so long. You know, that was that was when that I procrastination's did... hard to beat sometimes. Yeah, but it's this is when I realized I was depressed because I was not doing anything. Well, that was me Saturday. I got out in the shop, I started cleaning and then went, "Ooh, build this." Yeah. Uh, l- let's play with that. No, let's get back to no, let's Yeah. Well, it's like it's like whenever I cleaned up in here the other week to reorient the desk. I said, originally I was like, hey, fuck it. I'll just leave everything piled up over there. But then I'm like, no, I looked at, literally, you can see the pile of stuff I need to do sitting there. And that's not even all of it. Some of it's out there that I need to actually get to. That I never bothered to do a review of. Right. Um, and it's just finding like, and it's not like I work that hard. It's not that I need, and I'm sleeping pretty good. So like, as you yawn. Um, <laughs> we talk about sleepy sleepiness <laughs> power of suggestion just so bored with this conversation I'm like, Fuck. either way um it's just like uh, maybe it's because i veg out too much and i hit that glucose nap yeah something like or that like so, i had a big breakfast which is why i was really you're sleepy. sitting there death scrolling yeah but like i try not i catch myself doing that then i make myself stop and go at least do something do something else and like you know even I, if it's just one task and i've chastised jessica for doing it while watching a TV show, she'll pull a fucking anything on Netflix or YouTube or whatever, and then pick up her phone and just start scrolling. Yep. And I'm like, she's like, no, I'm listening. I'm like, no, you're not. It's like, what did they just say? It's like, but then now after chastising her for doing it, I'm catching myself fucking right. doing it. It's like, I'm, it's like, I'm to the point you that you need it, that dopamine rush. Well, it's you not need even that immediate that. gratification. <sighs> Maybe, but it's also the idea like they're, they're finally getting to me and I'm finally recognizing it's getting to me. Like, because if I'm doing anything else, like really doing something, I can focus on it. When I'm doing nothing, I won't focus on anything. Right. So if I sit down and I start filming something, I'm going to film it all the way through. Unless I run out of battery. At the same time, every once in a while, you need to do nothing. You need to sit. You need to defrag your brain. But I do that all the time. Ah. Because basically my job is sitting and doing nothing, much like yours most of the time well, is sitting and doing nothing. Well, my job is, but at home, when I wake up, I'm immediately hitting the ground running. I'm always exactly. working on, You know, I have a list. And yeah. when I go through that list, uh, okay, what do I, I, I make myself and, spend at least an hour working on my list every day. Yeah. And so that's what I had intended for today. And you can get a lot of work done in an hour. I Yeah, I know. And, like, the only thing I, I accomplished today was running to specs and getting that vodka. Nice. But... I might be getting some tonight on the way home. But what I, there's only one bottle left. Um, <laughs> unless you go to a different one. I'll go to the Willis one. Go to the one in Willis or probably some. I can always check before you leave. Because um, it will tell you if it's in stock. Either way. Um, but, like, I've got all that stuff sitting over there, including things that, yeah, they're all in the pile over there. So that's at least 10 things that I need to film. At least yeah. 10 things I need to film. And that doesn't include the very large robot standing over there, which I've dreading doing which is probably one reason why i haven't done it yet because that is that is a giant robot that needs to turn into a planet wow which is not easy very not easy i've only done it the once so what's he called uh primus okay so the one up here that you asked about last week not planetron that one not 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 planetron it's unicron (laughs) it's unicron percy i gotcha no no that's an insult (laughs) he is the he is the 
devil of Transformers. Robot devil. I mean, he looks like it. He, shit, yeah. He has big ass horns and and demon wings. All and it needs like is that. a brass band and a musical number. You've never seen Cybertronic Spree. <laughs> <laughs> They they are an eighties an eighties yeah. uh, funk band. Yeah, I know Cybertronic. Oh, you do. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's all Transformers mm-hmm. characters, including it's Unicron. It's a robot band, including Unicron. He's like the bass player usually. There you go. Yeah, he's the one, the big one with the fucking big orange one with the wings. That's Unicron. So that's him. So that transforms into a big old robot with wings. Oh, is that the one you're gonna do? That one over there on the desk. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. So. It's from the same company. They're roughly the same robot. Roughly. Yeah. But they don't transform the same way. Panels go together completely different. So do they devour other worlds? Or He does. Okay. He is just the, the life bringer of all Transformers. Okay. So he turns into their home world. And only in certain lore, but either way, he's their two sides of the coin. The creator god and the destroyer god. Mm-hmm. So... They're brothers, as gods can be brothers. Um, and in some universes, Unicron exists across all universes, but it's the same Unicron somehow, mm-hmm. if you're looking in the multiverse, whatever. Primus, not necessarily the same across all universes, either way. Um, but that one was such a pain in the dick, I haven't bothered trying to transform again. I, but here's the thing. What, did Jeff pull up the book? Start Have to. There's no, there's really? no choice. It took me three days time to get him properly transformed to planet. Uh, Coach, so there's no assembly. They come pre-assembled. There's a tiny bit of assembly. Okay. And, and I'll show it to you later. Cause you can't right now. He's got about, I'll just wait for the review. And well, he's it. got about 90 little tiny orange translucent bits. You have to okay. install and you have to find all the holes for oh, it. Press fit or you have to, yeah, they're all press fit. Okay. Uh, some of them probably should use glue. But other ones are press fit. The problem was is like some look like they'll fit in one one spot, and it's not. It's the next smallest one. And you're just like, motherfucker. But I got to a point where some of the smaller ones they were they were just sliding right out. And I'm cutting them off a runner, right? Are you using uh, those self closing forceps and all that to m- manipulate everything, or just no, just fingers? Just uh, well, I had I had tweezers to. to they have these get large tweezers that you squeeze them. They open. I have a set. They're, they are. I use them for gunsmithing. They're the great. problem is these things are so small that like and round. Yeah. They would just it would just shoot off because otherwise it would. But what I had was a small set of uh, just very fine point tweezers. Kind of a little plastic dip dipped on the tines would really I just make those gonna, work. Wasn't going to go that far. But the other thing was it was um, I know what you're talking about though. Basically making rubber tips yep. on them. Yep. But I need them for manipulating other things, and I don't want to ruin my one set of fine point tweezers. Oh, guess what you're getting for Christmas? I don't need more tweezers. I got too many. Either way, I got too many I don't use, and not enough that I will. Right. But the thing is, well, the, the two nice ones are the only ones you want to use. Yeah. So, but <laughs> what I was trying to get I'm at, with you. I'm with yeah. you. So, well, what I was getting at was that I was cutting the bits off the runner, but to get them to stay, is I would cut at a slight angle so that it had a wedge. So when you push it in, it would wedge and lock yep. in place. I like it. But it took about 50% of the way for me to realize that. No. So half of them are like that. The other half, I'm probably hoping need for a little, the best. Probably need a little CA glue or I something. I mean, if they start falling out, sure. Yeah. You know, but if they fall out, I'll be like, well. I mean, if the big ones fall out, then I'll worry about it. The small ones, eh, fuck it. I'm not going to worry about it. Then he also has spines on him, like soft-ish plastic spines. Mm-hmm. Like, this one is different. Like, they're not the same model at all. Um because he's got lots of spines, and they're all on little folding bits. His are not. They're poking out of very specific spots. They're basically supposed to be like towers okay. on the planet surface. And uh, they are very pokey. So you actually have to remove them for your own safety when manipulating it. Because otherwise, you're going to stab yourself in the hand a few dozen times. Hand if you're lucky. You know, because it, it was such a pain in the ass. So I do out-the-box things this mm-hmm. is another teaser for things on a patreon so i do out the box reactions and when i get transformers i do blind transformations as far as i can go so you just try to figure it out try to figure it out that one i said fuck it i'm not gonna try it's too complicated because i know from that one specifically pointing at unicron for those listening uh that one specifically i got a small way into it and i'm like i'm well out of my depth here. <laughs> like because you look at that and you go, how the hell does that turn into a robot that looks 
normal. Mm -hmm. And because it, they're very, very good at tucking stuff inside of other things. So very tight tolerances, all that. Pretty tight tolerances, but also making sure that like all those panels that make up the planted surface clip together properly. That one is easier, but I've only done that one once. Right. It might be easier once I get used to it. But here's the thing. For the review, this is the part I'm dreading. I have to compare. So, so you have to do them both. I have to do both. So you're going to have to time yourself on assembly and reassembly on both. More or less. But that's also another thing I do was uh, behind the review stuff. So, like, I do whenever I'm doing the... Oh my God, fucking, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll film all that behind the scenes. You will grumble. <laughs> I do behind the scenes videos for the patrons as well. If you guys want to see that, by all means, sign up for the Shogi Patreon. But, uh... So I need to remember how to get that guy back into planet mode. That one over there. And then I have to remember how to get this one back into robot mode. Robot. And I've already broken stuff on him before that I've fixed or got replacement parts for because there was some known issues off the bat. Apparently it wasn't a uh, uncommon issue because I had replacement parts. Exactly. Available. Well, the original problem was uh, like, so he's got the big ring around him, right? So that's an aftermarket part that they made because they knew the original one, the rings were too small. Yeah. So when I first bought the so set they were of rings, too thin, they'd keep breaking. No, they were just too small, like just in general, like too okay. tight. It didn't look right. So now they sell him with the larger wings slash rings. So those the ring actually folds up and turns into his wings. Oh, cool, cool. Just cool, 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 cool. cool so, cool. Uh, yes, I'm talking Transformers with Jeff, guys. It's fine. Uh, so the thing is, the first time I bought those new larger wing rings. They were missing one of the ends that connected the rings together. Like straight up gone from so, the factory. So wing ring ring? Yeah. yeah. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, yeah, that's that's called a setup, y'all. Either way. Um so I had to wait four months for the replacement ones. Four fucking months. Good grief. I was in the middle of that review. When I discovered no. that, I had to stop filming. What shirt was I wearing that day? What hat? Oh, was I, I didn't wearing? care about that. I'm not. Oh, on no the congruity. Camera. I'm not on the camera. It doesn't matter. But basically, I stopped it where it was, set it all aside, and then picked it back up when I finally got the parts. Did you do the SpongeBob intro four months later? No, I didn't have that then. I have, oh, that I have it great. now. I have it now. Um, so uh, usually when I'm doing. Like when I filmed the the vlog for whenever he did the room, yeah. there was parts of it where it was like four hours later, you know, and I actually do my own audio because I don't want to steal it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then like I, actually, I th yes, I did for the behind the or for the out the box review for that one for Primus over there. I did exactly that. Yeah. It was literally like. One hour later, four hours later, literally three days later. <laughs> <laughs> so it was literally three days later I went back to working on it. It just took that long. I started it on like a Thursday. I finished it on a Monday. And it was just like, oh, my God. This One weekend over. later. <laughs> yes, 17 years later. 25,000 years later. It's still good. One giant man spider later. <laughs> Spider hook. <laughs> so my question is with Spaceman, do the Koreans now get credit for discovering the thing? I uh, no, he yeah, he did ditch his ship. Completely. Completely. And it and went just, into the cloud and yeah. disappeared. And then floated there waiting for the Koreans to pick him up. And then the cloud opened up around him. Yeah. Which was weird. So we got no answers. So the I mean he was the first one there. I mean the Koreans were the first there to actually stay and study. I'm sure. And notice how their space station looks significantly better. Way nicer. Way nicer. It's just like, yeah, you can tell it wasn't slapped together. doesn't look like a space truck. Yeah. <laughs> Realistically, yeah. Because that's what it has looked like. It was a space truck. I mean. Yeah. Also, why would you have, like, such a large window, like, looking out into space? Because well, like, you, you only have to contain one gravity of pressure. Yeah, but I'm saying you have a giant ass window that could be broken, and it's literally one whole little area. Like it's one thing when you have like a porthole to look yeah. out, but he's got like a huge viewing dome. Who knows what material sciences would have been like in the future Czech Republic? You know, it could have been like future current. It's like could the, have been polycarbonate diamond. You, who knows? Probably not. Because like I said, it's like it's not really future tech. We have like 
essentially old every, panels with millions of buttons on them. And yeah, it's like and like I told you, it looks like old and new tech at, at the same time. At least he time. wasn't rocking an old dot matrix printer or anything like that. I fully expected that. <laughs> but either way, yeah, my brain is so tired from all the drinking yesterday um, that. Oh, by the way, okay, so I'll I'll mention that. So yesterday at Bartlett's, we met up with friends. I say we, it was just me. I like Bartlett's. Bartlett's is great. They're dog have, friendly too. Yes, they're a little too small, so they need to grow so they, we can have more room. They are small. Either turn you or turn the mic. <laughs> it's like you got to turn the mic towards so, you. That's sorry, funny. my backside's falling asleep. And believe me, I know. <laughs> How's the new chair? Mostly comfy. <laughs> But once again, the lumbar sport is in a weird spot and it's causing issues. Um, so, but what I was getting at was we played a new game that I hadn't played before. It's called Stuff Happens. Okay. And we were playing with. I kept I keep six. Was it six? Wow, that's a good. No, there. it was. It had to be more than that. six. Of y'all took up took up half the place. Well, then I got to math this out. It was seven because I was extra. I was the extra. What were you real. drinking on there? everything uh, they're old fashioned always had, my first had, go to so they had a they had a St. Paddy's Day drink which was fine yep um they're the smoked old fashioned one of my smoked favorite smoked old fashioned is great but i had to I had to smoke I had not smoke drink i had that i had a a uh, spiced white russian what's the one where they sprinkle the cinnamon on fire that's painkiller that's a good one i had a that's a rum drink right yes yeah. i had a uh was it a long bear did I have a long mire? Is that like a Long Island? No. No. Uh, I had a long mire before I left. I had a different drink that they were lacking cherries. So she substituted the it, sour candies. If y'all hit, the, hit that up early enough on Sundays, mm-hmm. I could stay for one or two and then yeah. go get ready for work. Yeah. Because I, I well, don't have to be at work till seven on Sundays. It, it, the event opened, it started at noon. So you would, have, you would have had a little bit of time. I was only there till like two, two yeah. thirty. But anyway, the game, stuff happens. So you just, everybody who's playing gets three cards. And each one has a bad situation, a funny little animation, and then the number rating on the, um, what did they call it? Uh, something scale. Bas- misery scale. Okay. Misery index. Misery so, index. I like that. Yeah, so, which is actually a podcast. But either way, so basically it starts from like 0.1 and it goes to like 99.9. And it's horrible shit and it's ranked numerically in badness. The the game creators figured all that out on their own, right? So the point is, is that the next person in line draws a card, tells you what that situation is, and you have to pick between your cards where it ranks Okay, between the numbers. So it's similar to Cards Against Humanity, but more of a, a playing on other people's play. Well, no, because all you're doing is trying to get 10 cards by guessing correctly where the number falls oh, on okay. the pain index in your uh, lane. So people's experiences are going to determine where their own index lies in the... Uh, well, yes. The oh shit meter it, it, will, it will determine what you think is bad. Because people that have lived a crap life and have gone through a bunch of stuff are, are like, gonna, eh. Yeah, exactly. So we had a lot of that going on. But, I mean, it goes from like... <laughs> We're damaged. It goes... A whole, <laughs> yeah. It, so it, it ranges from like st- or stepping on a Lego to... Just saying, like, nuclear war. Pulling your vast deference, you know? Yeah. Well, the regular... <laughs> so, Stuff Happens, which is the one we played, clearly the family-friendly edition. Um, it did have some very unpleasant situations, but what I had got right before you got here... You may need to bring that to the farm. Yeah. It's that, called Shit Happens. Yeah. So, that would be the not-safe-for-work version. Be fun. So, I bought the base game, the Little Shits edition, which is kid-related. Oh, good grief. Not kid version, but kid related. And then I bought the uh, work is shit version. So okay, it's okay. work related. So those are just expansions on the main one. And I think I have a third one coming. So like what, animals, pets, something like that. Something I got to remember. Uh, no, oh, I got the uh, 50 shades of shit. Oh, no. Yeah. So it's all uh, sexual related. Assholes and dildos, you know, probably. Oh, so which, yeah. Now I got to see which ones I bought. What did I buy? 
Okay, so that's the base game. No, that's the 50 Shades of Shit there. And then this is the Little Shits version. Okay. But I'm pretty sure I bought another one. Oh, yeah, so the one that's coming tomorrow is... Oh, I'm trying to see what the actual fucking thing is. It's like... Oh, that's the too shitty for work edition. Okay, so that's what that one is. Okay, so that means that I picked up a different one that I can't see. Base one, kid one, and sexual one. That's what we got so far. So that we will be playing that in future things. Though the hard part is, and, and I realize this, once you've played it enough, you know it all. You'll know the numbers. Just like cards against humanity. Yes, but at least in that case, you're not having to guess anything. You are the numbers know. preset? Yeah. All the numbers are preset. Oh. You don't determine the numbers. You just put the pick where you think that the one you don't know goes. So that is the hard part about the game is if you memorize them after a few times. You know, like have to, re- have to wrestle a man covered in shit. Yeah. And I spent eight years working at a jail. That's Tuesday. Yeah. And that that is likely going to be ranked somewhere in the... The lower the, thing for me. It's not, for, It would be. Yeah. It was just so... So what I got to think is that what we might do is play like the base game for a while and then add in the mm-hmm. the extra expansions because we do it all then that's going to be hard i'd like to get the same crew at the farm together that was a fun crew good yeah, good was... mi- mix diverse multi-generational yes maybe try to get the old man in with us <laughs> yeah maybe what um, <laughs> what <laughs> yeah yeah dad yeah that's fine yes i've got scurvy <laughs> twice so either way guys um shorter episode this week it's fine we didn't have anything massively planned we'll deal with that but also if you guys have any questions topics or other things put it in the comments section yeah, send us out give us some help or send in things in email i mean like it, it's funny part is like a whole week has gone by but we have honestly like either i can't remember all the things i've done because of all the drinking i've been doing right or or we just didn't just have been working entirely too much working too much on. whatever um so it is what it is oh I do know that I believe it's this week. Yes, the new Ghostbusters movie does come out, so I will be going. I do to need see to that. watch the one before. Yeah, you need to watch Afterlife. Got to figure out where the hell that. I think it's Paramount. Oh, homework. Yep. So it, that one's good. I need to get. Here's the problem: if Jessica's not going to go with me, then I'm just going to go see it. When? I don't know. It comes out on the 22nd, so I don't um, know what day. I work tonight. Gonna I'll watch Afterlife tonight. Okay, that's fine. Um, and so because my cousin wanted to go see it, so I need to find out what day he intends on seeing it because I can just go when the movie drops that's not right. a problem for me if it drops on thursday i can fucking go on thursday um oh i just realized i should do a patreon thing this week because next week i'm at the home free concert on wednesday whoops so first first concert in fucking years i'll get ahead of it and yeah. it's on a wednesday night i'm waiting for a larry fleet to come somewhere semi-local i don't know who that is uh, he's real good he sings a uh, song called uh, where i find god Hmm. You'd enjoy it. It's a good song. I might. He does not? a duet with... Uh, I might hate it. Was it Morgan Wallen? Yeah. I like Morgan Wallen. Yep. So we actually, the other night uh, on Tuesday, somebody sent in a request for this one little kind of southern, like bluegrassy type group. And the song they did, which I believe was an original, I would love to hear Morgan Wallen do it. Okay. Because I was like, this is a Morgan Wallen song. 100%. Right. Except these people are singing it, and I want to hear it in his voice. I was like, I need Morgan Wallen to see this song and make a cover of it. Right. Sorry, I'm moving my... I see. Yeah. New toys. No, I just forget (laughs) it. I forget it does that. Like, those are... They're not stationary. You can pull them up and down, but... Like, these aren't exactly... These armrests aren't padded. They're that soft rubber plastic stuff. So, it's like, those are padded, padded. So, these are not. It's a little weird. And these things are a little angular, so they will dig in. Luckily, so your this, arm will fall asleep? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> but these also get higher. Those are really like low. How high? Compared. These? These are as high as these go. <laughs> high as giraffe pussy. They are right. Eagles yeah. balls. Yeah. Eagles balls. Senator socks. Do senators have socks? Uh-oh. High as a whale. Think about it. I From know. a whale's perspective, it's over if it's ever over like the Marianas or any type of deep water, and it's on the surface, it's going wow, this is high. <laughs> but why would they think of things as high instead of deep? Yeah, I don't know. Why would, they wouldn't have a concept of high? I Maybe would think because I think high would be relative to where they normally hang out. So would the uh, the surface of the water be the ground of them and 
That's as far the as they can being go. being analogous to the sky for us. I mean, technically speaking, if the the sur- they understand that there's things above the surface. Yeah. Much like we understand there's things below the surface. So I understand your inverted perspective on yeah. that. However, we can't possibly know what their perspective would be as on depth or. Well, we or can't. Not no one sat around and talk. I haven't had one sit around and talk with me about it so. yet. Yet. I mean, we haven't put in a, a brain scan on the whales nope. yet. No so brain no. scan on free riri. Free riri. <laughs> I'm lost. Um, oh, free willy. Yeah. Took me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a minute there. Well, like, I, what we need to do is get to the point where we can uh, communicate with dolphins that way so we can hurry up and get them in the Starfleet. Because <laughs> you know that Starfleet had dolphins. Not that dolphin. He knows too much. <laughs> yeah. He's well, seen things. But see, a lot of people don't. So, okay, you know, so have you seen the Star Trek movies? No. You've never seen the Star Trek movies? No. Okay, so uh, there's there's the one with the whales. Space so, dolphins. So they legitimately have to go back in time. Which one's that? Uh, that is the journey home, which I believe is for question mark. No, That's not the newest mark. one coming out, but the Star one before Trek. It? No, there's no new Star Trek movies coming. Uh, currently, there's no new Star Trek movies. There's Starfleet coming. Academy or something. I saw a uh, that doesn't count. Well, I saw Star Trek something or other. There's Star Trek shows still happening. Yeah. Movies are not coming. So I know there's people going to be yelling at me about the numbers because it's been a while. Because it could be three. It's either three or four. Either way, Journey Home. There's a Weird giant probe thing that comes to our our solar system, and it has the ability to completely destroy the planet. Problem is, it's sending out what is basically whale song as communications. Okay. Whales have been extinct on Earth for generations at this point. So they end up traveling back in time to go find the last two whales in existence to bring them back to the future so that they can talk to the thing and tell it to go away and not kill us all. Mm-hmm. And so hilarity ensues. Um, including the fact that they have somehow get two humpback whales onto a Klingon bird of prey. <laughs> um, somehow is the ter- the thing there. But either way, that must have changed something about the future because on the Enterprise D, they do actually have what is known as cetacean ops. They have decks that are specifically for completely flooded and run by yeah. dolphins. Cool. So they they have dolphin officers on the Enterprise. We never see them, but there is reference to them. They're probably down there managing some kind of sub low sub frequency infrasound, something sonar, radar, or whatever. Well, the thing is, is like, well, they can run scientific. They do experiments and stuff yeah. like that underwater. But they're led, if I recall correctly, they're led by Flipper. No, it's because <laughs> there's a whole bunch of dolphins. And I think an orca could be wrong. It's a larger something, but it's not like a giant. An whale. orca is a dolphin. I know it is a dolphin. It's just, but just it's a, a larger thing than the normal standard just dolphin. A killer whale fish, you know. I mean, it could be wrong. It might be a humpback that they have in there, but it would be nuts. You got to think about this. That's a big critter. That's a bus. Yeah. So here's the weird part. We see the Enterprise D get blown up at least twice, effectively. And you never Nobody see evacuates the fucking dolphins. <laughs> so we just, just left. To- and nor is there a giant lake now in space where the water would have got out. That would have frozen, flash frozen. It wouldn't have flash frozen. It would have frozen from the outside in yeah. as the vacuum pulls it away from the water. Although we haven't seen, we don't, well, we probably have done experiments on what, like actually putting real liquid just out into space, yeah. see what it would happen. But putting a fish in water out in there, we have, I don't think we've done. Or we haven't told anybody about. It. Either way, <laughs> definitely not dolphins. But there's no dolphin sickles floating there. No dolphin sickles, mm-hmm. um, and we're not sending dolphins down. But like dolphins on away missions for underwater planets would make fucking sense. <laughs> Splat! Just send them, <laughs> send them down to water planets, right? But they nobody's ever explored this. But either way, the fact that the Enterprise does have cetacean ops is crazy. It's like operated by and run by creatures that. Well, I guess technically they come out of the water. They have to breathe somehow. Well, I'm learning. I'm learning yeah. stuff. So, but it does bother me because I don't remember what they're run by. I think it is. I, my brain says orca out of mem- memory, but it might actually be like a humpback because at that point they had the humpbacks in the future. Might have been a beluga too. Belugas are roughly the same though. They're roughly the same as a dolphin. But they're cooler. But nobody's putting a fucking narwhal down there. No. 
Because that would be annoying. You can't go around corners. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, uh, damn it. On a deck, yeah. That, that might He's be a little hard. push buttons with the fucking thing. Well, like, that's the other part. It's like everything they do would have to be either psychologically controlled or, or telepathically controlled. Yeah. I mean, yes, they could operate well, narwhal, large buttons. That narwhal could have hit buttons across the room. <laughs> but he basically <laughs> just got a built-in selfie stick. It would just be pointless. Yep. But it's like basically they're just like wide open decks. So the the funny part is like just I know we're on a weird tangent right here. It's, we're going to have, did, so, so here's the thing. The Enterprise, everybody underestimates how large these ships actually are in Star Trek. So the original Enterprise is something I, I don't have the exact number. It's actually over there in the thing. The the original Enterprise is decently sized, but is only run by like a couple hundred people max. Yeah. The Enterprise D has a complement of like right at a thousand people, but it's so massive that if you actually distributed people amongst it evenly, you could work for days on end and never interact with another person right because it's so big it's basically like imagine just a thousand people on a cruise ship but being humans being humans they do better working together they congregate yeah which means there are vast empty decks Mm -hmm. of nothing but now that we know there are multiple decks of just water filled fucking shit with dolphins and whales doing something that nobody gives a fuck Who about. Apparently, is, are expendable. Every single but, one of them. Do you know what I would have thought would be fun for that? Is that like somewhere there's like you have a water deck that wraps around a normal deck, so you can have something. They could under, interact, hang out, have underwater area bars like that. Yeah. Like, but it is funny. Like that they didn't think about these things when they made when they came up with the design. No, they're just hey, let's do this. This yeah. is neat. So I think I think they said that if you had Here, take this pill, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if if. If you really wanted to use like a galaxy cr- class cruiser for, say, evacuating a planet, you could fit thousands of people on it. I mean, you'd be packed in, but I think you could probably get something like nine or ten thousand people on that ship. Right. I mean, you've got to br- have that many people breathe, so you're. I mean, be- hell, from the size, it, it looked like the Galactica was even bigger. Oh, the battle. Uh- it, it, at least in the shows, the, let me, the, the let recent me do, remake, they let, were let me, huge. Well, it's actually roughly the same size. Hold on. Battlestar Galactica. Uh, sh- uh, Which a lot of people talk crap about the 04 remake. I really enjoyed it. I loved it. Uh, specifications. That's it was kind of slow, but it, it, it picked up and slowed down. Love that show, dude. Okay, so it is... Okay, it's actually really fucking big. I I knew I was so on something. So it's oh sorry oh, it's fourteen hundred meters. Wow. So Enterprise not rent a car. Uh, that's the official ships of the line. Yes, that is exactly what I meant. Thank you. Uh, wow. Unlike Google, it didn't come up with the exact thing I'm looking for. Uh, so it's uh, hold on. 0.87 of a mile long. What? The Galactica. Yeah, it's 4,000 and some odd feet. That's huge. Yeah. The Enterprise D. Trying to... F- it's, uh, why is this all spelled and out? And because of the shape of the Galactica, it was all... Enclosed. There were no pretty architectural, no, no, no pretty, you know, swooping tail fins or nothing. It was yeah. all cargo. Yeah. So and the, all weapons. So yeah, you're right. The Galactica is significantly longer because the Enterprise D is only 641 meters, and because of its design, it could probably hold three or four times as m- many people as the Enterprise. Maybe because it's it's not pretty. It's functional. Yeah, but it also is a very different functional ship. As it goes. Yeah, the weapons take up a good bit of room. Yeah, that has giant decks. That's the other thing is like one thing, like just the way it's used, you never actually get to see. Uh, of course, look at all the flight decks. Yeah, the flight deck pods uh, and all that. And uh, I'm sure there were multiple flight decks and all that. Well, you got to think, at least on the Galactica, they had the main mechanic deck. Yeah, they're launched on the both launch, sides. They're in launch tubes. Yeah, but it's also, it's probably narrower, if I had to guess. The actual Galactica is narrower than. But but for like, for like launch ops, that they could get. Hell, the, the whole squadron out in okay, no that's, time. That's the original. I want the new. There it is. Okay. 
FTL drives. Okay, so that's the link. Doesn't have the width though. That's weird. Because the the Enterprise D main shuttle deck or sh uh, shuttle bay is like three decks tall and like incredibly wide. We never actually see it in the sh in the series, mm -hmm. and it can be it can hold probably dozens upon dozens of, of shuttlecraft. Yeah, and that's just the one main flight deck. It has three flight decks. Mm -hmm. So the smaller ones are the only ones we ever actually see, and those hold a few. You know, those are the ones for like hauling, moving cargo uh -huh. around, but like or uh, little things. So it's kind of weird. But like the Galactica, you got to think nothing other well, than w w what were they? The Vipers. Vipers, and the, they had a ton of them. They had a ton of Vipers, and then they had a few of the Raptors. And, and preloaded in their uh, in a in a, a ready status, they can get you know whole squadrons in the in the black in no time. Yes. Um, they had launch ports. So yeah. That was different. They launched sideways and landed diagonally or uh, longitudinally. Mm -hmm. But when it came, like, I think you couldn't fit rather other large ships except for, like, the Galact or whatever they called it, Galactic One or whatever, the the president's ship. Yep. What was it called? Something One. Colon Colonial One. Colonial One, yeah. Got to get there. Yeah, Colonial One could fit on you're, the flight you're deck. You're going to make me have to revisit the series again. I've seen it a lot. Um I could talk. I could talk Battlestar Galactica a lot. It's either that or Xena next. I don't know. Don't don't revisit, <laughs> don't revisit Xena. It's not worth it. Um, because she's in that series anyway, so you can just watch her in Galactica. Yep. Uh, Space Xena. Oh, Lucy Lawless is always one of my favorites. I, I wish they had somehow got Kevin Sorbo in there. I like fun. Lucy Lawless in just about anything. Uh, she was very good in Parks and Recreation. I did not like her in. Oh Your, wait, what oh. Euro Trip? <laughs> no. I'm trying to remember if it was Rome or if it was Spartacus. I forget which one she was in. Spartacus. Okay, so it was a Spartacus. With uh, Jonathan, the guy who played Jonathan in the Mummy movies. Yes. yes. What's his name? I don't fucking Little know. Little Weasley guy? Yeah, I don't know his name. I don't know the actor's name. Um, okay, here's actually useful. Yeah, see what I need is like the sci-fi ship comparison thing. That would be interesting. They got posters of that. I know. I'm just, I don't have one accessible to you me. You don't have room. No, not in here. I don't. Other, that's why I you have all the other on, stuff. Throw it on the inside of the closet door, and we could have a reference. <laughs> yeah. Nah, that's where my proton pack was supposed to go originally. Okay, I was going to hang it inside the door, so that way it wasn't always out. Um, so, but now it's always out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I want to talk about this real quick. So I mentioned the new Ghostbusters is dropping, right? So Adam Savage has been doing a bunch of behind the scenes stuff on set. So he got to see. He dropped the video. Spoilers. I need to watch it. Yeah. So spoilers. He 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 visited the uh, their ghost the headquarters right. Yes. The, the headquarters set. The new one, yeah. Because he went to after, the after the ones on Afterlife as well. He visited them, looked at all the props. He made stuff for that yeah. set actually. Or He's for, still so active with everything. Everything. Man. He just yeah. doesn't stop. So, but spoilers for the movie. They upgrade their fucking proton packs. Because Hasbro needs to sell some more of shit. Of course they need to sell some more so, shit. So, <laughs> like, the last go-around, they had the original packs, and then they had Eng Egon's specific pack, which you'll see when you watch it. And that's what that is out there. I'll watch it tonight. Yeah, so that's what that is technically out there. That is the Afterlife pack yeah. and whatever. Now they could sell a new version of that fucking thing. That's, what, oh, that's all it is. It's marketing. It's annoying. I mean, like, it, actually, the cool part is... E so, you'll see, and... and and I, I'm going to have to make a follow-up video. So when Afterlife came out and I got to, uh, I'd actually downloaded that ripped version of it to do this movie review. But I came up with a theory that Afterlife actually removed Ghostbusters 2 from canon. Real, that, see, I like Ghostbusters 2 over Ghostbusters okay. 1. I thought well, it was more fun. So you're one of the weirdos. However. Are you surprised? No. However spoilers from adam visiting the set reintroduces stuff specifically from ghostbusters 2 cool not cool because you gotta buy more shit no not that <laughs> because i mean yes i will admit that my theory might be wrong <laughs> i don't like to do that because i was fucking ripped to shreds in the comments over my theory like completely ripped to shreds by these assholes and i'm like i very clearly stated my case and, like, after you watch Afterlife, I'll send you the video so you can see if it makes sense to you. Okay. Because everybody I've sent it to say, like, yeah, that totally makes sense. 
However, now that Jason Reitman, that's Ivan Reitman's son, he you know did the original. Um, he decided that now they're back in New York. Oh, we're just going to throw in some Ghostbusters two shit, specific Ghostbusters mm-hmm. two shit, and I'm like. <sighs> But you didn't excuse the other things that Afterlife clearly removes from canon. So it's going to be interesting. Well, like we said a few weeks ago, yeah. if it's in the new movie, it is now canon. It, well, it's canon to the movie. The movie. But, and this is the problem. When you have somebody who's supposedly you know, making these movies from the source material. So I'll, I'll tell you one thing that I specifically had a problem with in, in Afterlife. It's the Ecto one. So it's an old hearse. Yes, it was a hearse, but it could have been an ambulance on the alternate side. Mm-hmm. And mind you, I have mine out there. The problem is, is that in Ghostbusters two, the original Ecto one died, but when they got the influx of money from the city, they went and bought another one and revamped it to make the Ecto one B. Yeah. Or A. That's the confusing part. It's the A. So there's Ecto-1 and Ecto-1A. Yes. Except they never went and got the original Ecto-1 back. So they just left it it wherever it it went to the scrapyard. So it died on the Brooklyn Bridge, just completely died in canon. In the novelization of the thing, which is also canon, Ecto-1, the original Ecto-1 completely died on them, mechanically completely failed, they took a bunch of the stuff from it, so that you know their specific Ghostbusters their equipment, logos, stuff and they, like that, and they scrapped it. Yeah. Well, I mean, they took the scientific equipment and need that mm-hmm. shit going out there, and then they built the new one with all the new cool shit and everything else like that. And it, in canon, is a completely different car. Yep. Completely different car. Afterlife. They went back to Ecto One. They went back to the original Ecto One. The logos, all the equipment, everything is the original car that is gone in canon completely gone they did that to sell more toys but the thing is collectibles i should say but they they could have just made another ecto-1 but here's my problem with the new one frozen empire but that won't give them a chance to sell an ecto-1 and ecto-1a yes at the same time yes but they didn't sell an ecto-1a again they did not not yet they have not so here's the thing at the end of the movie spoilers for the end of the movie, they regain the original Ecto-1 mm-hmm. and they take it home because the afterlife does not take place in New York. Yeah, it takes place in the country or something like In that. Oklahoma. Yeah. Which is weird. Uh, also, canon problems there. <laughs> Definite canon problems there. You sound like me on the dude. Well, the main reason I say this is because <laughs> Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters only has primary canon and secondary canon. Primary canon is the movies, the novelization of the movies, the Xbox 360 game was... So what, the can- animated series has nothing to do with canon? Nothing. Okay. At all. It, that, that is secondary canon. The animated series is secondary canon with the comic books that deal with the Ghostbusters multiverse. Okay. Which would be an amazing thing for them to actually continue. The multiverse of Ghostbusters stuff gets crazy. Because the the Ecto one gets destroyed in the multiverse mm-hmm. when it gets stepped on by Gozer's brother in its gigantic destroyer form. Yeah, so we don't get that in this. What form did it take in that? I don't know. Some giant demony thing. Okay, I have no idea. So not the Stay Puff, Stay no, no, Puff no, no, Marshmallow no, Man. No, it's some other type of demony form. Was that the Michelin Man? You had it right the first time. Okay. Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. So what what I'm getting at is that there's another Ecto one in the new movie. Mm-hmm which is clearly based off of the one from Afterlife because it has the new modifications to it that happened somewhere over 30 so years. So somebody screwed up and they're not rocking. But, but here's the thing. still has Ecto-1 plates, so it is still the original car. And they've modified it to update it now that they're back and have money again. It might be a thing that, you know, kind of like the president, if he, if he changes uh, planes, it's no, the because new plane becomes Air well, Force One. That's not how this works because... There's no canonical ending for the Ecto One A. That just ceased to exist, and they still have the original. Well, then you're getting to the willing suspension of disbelief and just and, going. And, but this is much like you with Dune. But this is the problem. Dune has multiple canonicities. But much like us, much like our final 
decision with Dune. Go into it. Yes. Enjoying it for what it is, but, not what you want it to be. Hold on. But that's, and while that is my argument, but that's the argument when there are multiple sources of canon. We're talking about a source of canon. Un. One. Much, it's like Ghostbusters only has its own canon. Okay, that's canon it. whore. Yeah. This is one of the few things I'll be a canon whore on because <laughs> there is only the one because they don't really acknowledge beta canon or a secondary canon. That's never been a part of the movies. Now, they the original 360 Ghostbusters game, which was fantastic. It was a definite straight up sequel. The guys came back to voice act for it. Everything. Oh, really? Yes. Great game. You play as the rookie. Hopefully they do an emulator on the, or a, a port. It, well, maybe I don't know who owns the license today right. anymore, but the problem is that game was primary canon until Afterlife. Really? Yes. Afterlife completely eliminates that. In my argument, the argument I made in the video was that it eliminated not just the game, but eliminated Ghostbusters two from canon. There's got to be interviews somewhere talking talking with the creator. Ivan the Ivan Reitman. I'm sorry. Does, uh, does J- he address that? Jason Reitman has been asked about, it and he says no. It's all still there because I made this one small reference in the background that you didn't notice. That was an afterthought. Just to cover that's his what ass. I said. That's a fucking afterthought <laughs> because he didn't realize what he had done when he wrote the movie. <laughs> <He> went, oh, <laughs> but like so. This is the problem. They're gonna kill me now. Now ret- retcons are a thing. But you can't retcon an entire fucking movie. This isn't the DCU. You can try. So, here, so <laughs> this this is the this is the spoiler that was given from Adam Savage, is that in the firehouse they utilize the. I guess sl- I'll, I'll watch that after I get done watching Afterlife. So, so you 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 like two better than one. I did. So, in two they introduced new technologies yes. with the slime technologies. They com- I enjoyed the dancing toaster. Yes. The toaster was the reference in in Afterlife. Okay. You won't notice it. There's a small scene. Or it's sitting in the background? No, it, it is used, but you don't know that it's the same toaster. Okay. And here's the thing. Jason Reitman said it is literally the same toaster. Literally. Literally the same prop they used in Ghostbusters 2. Okay. So, but you just think toaster. Who cares? When you realize that, you go, oh, that's weird that they would have that still. Well, it's the same generic chrome toaster that's been in every grandma's Correct. house forever. Correct. So there were two <laughs> there were two small references in Afterlife to Ghostbusters 2. References. Not canon c- canon things that definitely happened. But what they definitely do is eliminate any and all mention of the events of 2. Really? All mention of it is gone. Oh, good but grief. in the new movie, Frozen Empire, yeah. they bring back the slime blowers. The thing that shoots the pink yeah. slime. And it's like, okay. It's like, so it's like. See, I, I like, I like Vigo. And, and, and the, fine. The, the whole Vigo scene cracked me up. And fine. People like the comedic aspect because two was very much comedy. I mean, just that one line. It's Vigo. He's Vigo. <laughs> and, and that's their explanation we for. We keep joking. Um, I'm going to be getting a main coon eventually and I'm going to name it Vigo. Okay. And uh, be seems, the big, huge, 25 reason. Ron Perlman looking angry uh, cat. And every time it comes around the corner, I'm going to go, it's Vigo. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's horrible. But but what I was getting at is just the fact that, okay, so they kept the same Ecto-1 that we like. We actually got to see it in while Adam's walking around. They, they didn't show up in close-up detail, but I noticed some new shit. Okay. And I'm just like. Because you built one. Well, yeah, but I know what it looks like. I know the differences between the Ecto-1 and the Ecto-1A. Major differences between the cars, which is why it's bullshit that Jason Reitman came out and said, no, it's the same car. The the, the Ecto-1 was an Oldsmobile hearse, right? No, it's the same Cadillac hearse. Oh, really? Same Cadillac, except actually, correction, the Ecto-1A was actually an ambulance, not a hearse. The first, the regular one was a hearse. Not It's the same uh, Miller Meteor, no matter what. Right. But... It was a different car. It's the trim on the su- on the back end that's different. Barely. Yeah. But like, I'll send you the video when it's over. Okay. But I need, you need to watch the movie, so I don't want to spoil things for you. I'll probably go next week and watch the new one. Uh, when's it drop? Thursday? 22nd. Okay. So Thursday. So that's probably when I'll go see it. Oh, but I uh, won't go see it because I'll be working that night. I'm going to take off Thursday because, no, wait, that's next week. I'll just go see it after work. Fuck it. I want to go Friday. Huh? I can get up and we go Friday. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. 
We'll make plans one way or the other. Either way. Um, Saturday. So that's go. that's my that's my gripe with the new movie as it's coming is that it's now combining continuities between movies that it basically eliminated from canon, and I'm just like, that's fucking. So annoying. there's no other Ghostbusters I need to catch up on. There's not a no nothing else that matters in this okay. canon. Because 2016 doesn't count. Is that the one with the, the females? Yes, the okay. all female and that reboot. doesn't count? That is not in canon whatsoever. If anything, that's in the multiverse. Okay, okay. So if they want to do a Ghostbusters multiverse, they already have it. They already have it built they in. They may be setting it up. They may, pl- may be playing if, long game on it. If they go there and go where the IDW comics went, that will be amazing. Okay. But the problem is, with the old guys being as old as they are now, it's going to be hard to do a lot of the things they did. See, I like the revival. So, uh, do you think they're setting up for a takeover for a, a passing of the torch? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's what they're doing. With it. That's what Afterlife basically was. So, if you watch, I think it'd be great if they kept turning the the Ghostbusters past the torch into a multi movie series. And that's what they should have done initially, yeah. except that Bill Murray got in the way of of Ghostbusters three ever happening. Mm-hmm. Which is why when the game happened, the game was proper canon. Because they were training a new generation of Ghostbusters, they were expanding their technologies, they were expanding operations. Because in the in the comics, there are Ghostbusters in multiple cities. There's Ghostbusters Europe. There's Ghostbusters across America. Everything. In the movies, one set of Ghostbusters ever, mm-hmm. and they ceased to function in the late '80s, early '90s. All right. That's when ghosts stopped existing. But <laughs> that's what you'll learn. And then, like I said, I will send you the video afterwards. Because the general public, apparently, in the, after the 80s, weren't afraid of no ghost. Actually, well, you watch the movie. <laughs> they just, all paranormal events stopped. Yeah. At a very specific time. Well, they plugged the hole, didn't they? No. Because ghosts existed no matter what. But they'll, in, the, in the trailer, they actually give this a little bit away. Because there's a conversation that happens. Once again, it goes into the video that I made. Oh, don't that tell I'm me the, the, large H, the LHC is what stopped them. The Large Hadron Collider? Yep. No. Okay. No, it's just, it, it, it's nothing like that. There's no big explanation for why ghosts just stop happening. Just the, a bullshit reason to cover their ass? Yes. <laughs> but it's, it's that it comes down to the details that I pick out from the information we're shown and the information that we're told. Right. Is where I come up with these. This is when events happened. So this is like the reason I said that it eliminate. And I'll just tell you the reason I said that afterlife eliminates two from canon is that. Do you remember at the beginning of two when they're like running around doing bullshit like parties? Yeah. It's so, because they basically ran out of ghost of us. They were the has They, they, they were the has They were the, uh, the authors of their own demise. Exactly. So. If you take that point, which is in 1989, Christmas of 19 or Thanksgiving of 1989, going into Christmas 1989, going into New Year's 1989, which is why Vigo needed to have a new baby at New Year's is when he could take over. Yep, it's was Vigo. The, it was Vigo. <laughs> that never uh, not isn't no. funny to me. <laughs> so here's the thing. The reason, and I'll explain it here, even though I have a whole video for it. Afterlife eliminates Vigo from ever happening. Because they explained that they shut down in that span of time, permanently. Okay. And then they never mention what happens in Ghostbusters 2. There's no reference to it. They talk about what happens in Ghostbusters 1. Afterlife is basically a direct sequel to to Ghostbusters 1. So so what? The, the, was there some time dilation or something that happened? That I don't. It's Jason Reitman wrote this fucking movie. And completely eliminated a whole movie from his canon without thinking about it. And I pinned it to exactly what Ray says in his explanation. In the movie, he says some movie star started buying up all of... Um, fuck, what am I, what's the word? The area of New York. Um, Tribeca. Okay. That happened in reality. That happened in 1989. Summer of 1989 or uh, early fall of 1989 is when that started happening. You know, Tribeca Film Festival, mm-hmm. all that kind of shit. They literally bought out a section of Tribeca, which guess where the Ghostbusters fucking house is? Yeah. It's in Tribeca. He bought all that shit up to make movies in New York. They sold the firehouse. They shut down forever. That was what that said that happened. 
And that completely eliminated number that two. That completely eliminates number two from canon. Good grief. But no. But yeah. no. In the new fucking movie, <laughs> it's back. <laughs> like, fuck you, Jason Reitman. That's gonna be the that's gonna be the title of next week's episode after we see the movie. I'm gonna be like, fuck you, Jason Reitman. Right in your fucking ass. It's like I'm glad that he they they completely recreated the firehouse from scratch. Completely rebuilt. They did it right. Dingy rundown, or, that, or is it nice? I mean, it's dingy up? and rundown, but it's a brand new set. Okay, based off the old set, and it looks gorgeous. Looks gorgeous. Really? Yeah, and they built a fake outside. And the they built a the, fake inside. They still kept the pole, the fire pole, and all yeah. that. Yeah, so but here's the thing: it's not the real building. It's a fake version of, of the real building. It's a set. Yeah, it's a set. So they built a fake version inside and out, but only the bottom floor is real. For that set, then they built the top two floors of it on a separate set. Of course, so you actually have a well, live-in area that can be walked to from one to the other. Yeah, you're not gonna freaking build a whole. They fire didn't house. build an entire. Well, they built the outside of an entire firehouse. Right. They did. It's beautiful. Looks exactly like it should. But being a set, it's easier to shoot because open walls. All exactly. That. Exactly. So it's it's pretty cool what they did, except for what the fuck to playing around with goddamn cannon. <laughs> So it's like it, now, now you see how I felt with but, Dune. But here's the problem: the Dune, you're going against the book. Still, I'm, I'm going matter. against the same timeline. It's like one timeline, and they're just like, "Fuck this whole movie from existence." Right. And then they go, "Never mind, put it back in." It's like you can't fucking do. You literally said this didn't happen. That's why I'm so mad at it. So I went back and did a little watching. I forgot that. uh in the very first Dune movie, John uh-huh. Luke Picard was sitting there in it. I, I think that was a whole Hollow Deck episode. Oh, you think he was, but it was just Gurney pretending Halleck? to be Gurney? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like this Dune, Patrick simu- Stewart. This yeah. Dune simulation is great. <laughs> this desert power. Man, yeah. So actually, desert so he was power, Gurney. Yeah. So he was actually using Worf to play fucking um, uh, Duncan Idaho. Yeah. <laughs> Worf is Duncan Idaho. <laughs> There we go. All right, there we go. We got some extra time out of that Ghostbusters discussion. I am fucking mad. About Your freaking rant. Seriously though, dude. Like I will make a whole video about it, and I will fucking call out Jason Reitman specifically that he retconned two out of existence with Afterlife, and then brings it fucking back with Frozen Empire. Well, let's let's catch the movie this week and go at him. Yeah, because I'm gonna fucking be angry. I'm gonna have to watch all of them then. Well, I mean, you have to watch all of them because yes, because I want to. I mean, you can. But, <laughs> so here was my problem. If Jessica wants to see it with me. Then, I'll go on my own. No, I'm, I'm, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is if she wants to see it with me, then I have to get her caught up on the movies. She's never seen them. What? Yeah. So like she's seen a bit of them, but she's never watched the whole fucking thing. Right. So she would have zero care for what happens. Like she won't be mad. I, I, I have but, a feeling that even if you make her watch all of them yeah. again, she still won't be mad because she won't give it. No, no, she, no, she won't be mad. I don't care about that. My care is like if she wants to see this new movie with me, but has zero reference for why any of it matters. Right. Period. Like she never saw Afterlife. Who's that old guy? Yeah. Like she, she literally <laughs> never saw Afterlife because she didn't see the other ones. Right. I went and I saw it alone and then we talked about it on the podcast. I think. Did I have a podcast by then? Yes. Because I did. Well, I did a full on review of oh, it. I'll get caught up tonight. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, watch Afterlife. It's a good movie. It just is. But a lot of if well, you, I've got well, six hours tonight. And... Well, now now that I say that, and this is this isn't anything, because you like two, you might not like Afterlife. But I'm still gonna watch it. Yeah, so still we'll watch it. But I'm I'm saying because like it, it's not a spoiler. But I'm gonna it's go not into it funny. with our newfound open mindset and mentality uh, of approaching movies. Well, the thing is, at least you have the reference of the old movies yeah. to go off of. But the People who did not like Afterlife probably prefer two over one because one of the complaints was that they didn't make it as funny. It wasn't as, as silly as a movie. There is humor in it. There is some humor. But There's some good humor in it. Man, um, what's his name? The skinny dude. He was funny as hell in the... Talking about uh, Egon? No, the, uh, the, the their tax attorney guy. Oh, yeah, he's gone. Who brought the dog? Accountant, yeah. <laughs> No, now there may be rumors that he might be in the new one. Maybe, yeah, there might be rumors about that. Because he was hysterical, but he quit one. acting. Period. Rick Moranis. Yeah, that. Yeah, because his that wife, guy. his wife died or was brutally oh. murdered, whichever way that went, I forget exactly. I Either way, his that. wife died, and he sta- he quit acting to stay home and raise his kids. 
So yeah, he quit acting. Period. Okay. So he's only shown up in like one or two things ever. I think one of them was a Mint Mobile commercial, something like that, with Ryan Reynolds. Mm -hmm. um, he was legendary in a Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of Horrors, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, mm -hmm. all that. A um, few other movies in there. There was another uh, Little Giants. Mm -hmm. He was in that with uh, Ed Harris, not Ed Harris, Ed O'Neill. Wrong Ed. <clears throat> so um, if he if they convinced him to come back, because I do believe he. He's either in Pennsylvania or in New York, mm -hmm. I believe. I don't think he ever became a and his California kids are guy. grown by now. Actually, you know what? To be fair, to I don't know. Fair. To be fair. Well, to be fair. Oh, don't say to be fair. I hate when people say to be fair. It sounds like a to be fair. To be fair. Well, to be fair. I don't know if they shot it in New York, the new movie. It probably was in California. Oh, probably. Probably, because it's mostly sets. You know, some of it's outdoors. Clearly, they might have flown over and got some B-roll on New York streets or something like that. Perhaps. I mean, I don't even need to just go there to get some street shots stuff yeah. like that. But the fact that it's taking place in proper New York City again is kind of cool. Although I think it was interesting having a brand new set for the second movie, like a farmhouse in fucking Oklahoma, right? Which is pretty cool. So either way, um, there's your there's your homework for the week. Um, we're just gonna have new new homework sections for everybody. Hey, I'm down. Either way. Um, and then I'll try to remember to actually remember shit this week. Get me educated. Yep. So yeah, and then like I said, I'll send you the video explaining all the problems I had with like, <laughs> with evidence. Here's the problem. Send it tomorrow. I sent fucking evidence in my video. Fucking evidence from Ghostbusters canon. How and why? I went into real world history. Send it tomorrow. I'll get into it Tuesday. Yep, that's fine. It, tomorrow is Tuesday. Oh, then Wednesday when I'm orc. Yeah, one of those things. Either way, guys. So uh, make sure to do the like and subscribe thingy. Uh, go ahead and uh, email us if you have any questions, comments, or shit we should talk about. At the uh, now you made it awkward mail at gmail .com. That's in the description down below. Also, if you want to rate us on any of these podcast apps, give us however many stars, hearts, unicorns, or whatever the fuck they do. Um, lucky charms, the, the lucky charms ratings as well. Also, just if you in, in the YouTube comments or Facebook, follow all the things Nymea related. Also, merch. If you want to buy some merch, it does exist. You know, we'll eventually come up with some hefty merch. Yep, come on. Somewhere down the line. <laughs> we'll figure out something. It's like merch comes to me. We'll figure out what, how it works out in the future. So, either way. Um, and you don't really have anything to plug at the moment. Nope, so not, at, not at the moment. Yep, so. So, I'm getting interference from my... There. <laughs> Easily distracted he is. Well, it's like in my ear, so it's easy to distract me when it's a noise in my ear. Um, also, guys, of course, uncut version on the Patreon, which is not a whole lot cut. I mean, also, go check out the promos that we did where we are drinking things, which is what led to this discussion in the first place. I'm not even buzzed. No. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. We'll we to, planned it right. We'll, we did good. We did good. We'll have to crack open a beer after this. So. Responsibility. Responsibility. <laughs> and with that, okay, bye. Okay, bye. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats